Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time if you haven't been here before. We are getting into that super busy time of year again. In a way, there kind of isn't a non-busy time of the year, but also the fall up until Christmas just seems like the very busiest time of the year to me. Now, I love it but I also have to stay on top of things or life will completely overrun me for sure. So I figured this would be the perfect time to share a mega clean with me marathon that is full of all the homemaking motivation that you're gonna need to stay motivated and on track with your lengthy to-do list. Now I do have a giveaway going on this month, so I will get to that in just a moment. But if you're new here and haven't seen one of these marathon videos before, it is a video concept that my husband Kyle came up with a few years ago and it's been a favorite on my channel for years. So this video is a compilation of several of my recent motivating videos, all nicely packed into one super long video so that you can pop it up on your TV, tablet, or phone and get constant motivation without having the distraction of a shorter video ending and having to find a new one and breaking that momentum that you've built up. This way you can stay focused and get things done easily and also you'll have a friend to hang out with the entire time. So before we get into things, I wanted to remind you about that giveaway that I have going on this entire month. I am giving away a box filled with $200 of my fall favorites and all you have to do to enter is be sure that you're subscribed to my channel and leave a comment on each of the videos that I post this month and that's it. Now this is completely optional but if you want an additional entry you can share any video from my channel on your social media and then leave me another comment below just letting me know where you shared it and as always all of the details for that will be in the description box down below and I also just wanted to take a moment to say whoever is needing to hear this i hope you know how amazing you are how loved you are and what a difference that you make in this world i truly hope that you know that and can feel that now without further ado let's get into it Hey guys, it is very late right now, like 11.15. I've been working on actually a different video tonight and the day was just so busy. As you can see, like everything's kind of been neglected, but that's okay. It's been a busy summer day and we're just, you know, enjoying family time and doing all the things, but we are going to go ahead and clean things up tonight. Everyone is actually in bed asleep except for Luke. I think he's a bit of a night owl like I am. And I told him I was gonna go ahead and clean up tonight and he was like, well, I'll join you. He jumped up at the opportunity to just kinda hang out. Really fun just doing things together, even if it's not like necessarily the most fun, exciting thing, but it's fun bonding time. So anyway, Luke and I are going to go through whatever areas of the house are not occupied tonight <laughs> by sleeping people and we are going to get it all nice and clean so that tomorrow we can wake up to a clean house and it'll just feel good. So we're gonna actually start upstairs cause that's a bit trashed and then we'll kind of come down here, make our way downstairs and get it all tackled. So let's go ahead and get into it. I have been cleaning at night once all the boys go to bed ever since they were tiny 
and I used to clean because it was impossible to clean during the day and then when they got a little older I cleaned at night because it was just a peaceful time to kind of put the house to sleep and reflect on the day and anything that I may be going through and now that my kids are in another older stage I find myself doing nighttime cleans because I want to get in more time with them during the day. I feel like I've just been watching them grow so quickly lately and so I'm just doing my absolute best to make Make sure that I have lots of quality time with them and if that means I need to do some more of my cleaning at night then I'm totally fine with that but there's also just something so peaceful and calming about closing the house down for the night while everyone else is quietly sleeping it's just very therapeutic to me but on this night Luke and I started in the loft and this is usually where you will find him during the day if he's not with friends or playing football but we were both honestly like very tired this night I was starting out a lot later than I typically do probably because it's summertime and you know life's a little bit more chaotic less rules and stuff but after we got started and we kind of got to talking and I feel like we got another wind of energy and things kind of started flowing a little bit easier So the boys had some friends over on this day and they spent the day in the theater room for the most part playing and hanging out and I'm pretty sure they made forts and closed down all the windows just to make it extra dark and fun in here. And since we don't need them closed at night for privacy, we went ahead and opened up the windows again. I know it's kind of weird timing to open up your blinds at night, but since we didn't need privacy or anything, I wanted to do that so that the light could just pour right in in the morning. We last spoke. Life's been good to you, and I see that you're with someone new. Maybe you are better off now that you're with him. But when I see so we got this little fridge to keep up here for drinks and things whenever we moved in. And a few months back, I started ordering a big pack of these Zevia sodas to stock it once a month. And I feel like it's perfect because it actually lasts our whole family about a month to go through all of these. And I love them because they are only sweetened with stevia and they also have no dyes, no colors added, anything like that. So when you're having a sweet tooth or like if we're having a movie night or something, like we can still have something that feels, you know, like a soda, but it's a better option than having soda in the house. Let me know if you have a cleaning routine, whether that's like a morning cleaning routine or a nighttime cleaning routine, even like, you know, just stuff that you do every single day. For me, I'm like working on my cleaning routines all the time. I used to have them down really good and, you know, over the years things change and I just need to get back to like being very specific about certain things. However, I think I've pretty much always maintained a nighttime cleaning routine. It definitely doesn't look the same every single night. However, I would say nine out of 10 times or more. My kitchen is clean when I go to bed at night. Our living room is picked up. The intensity of my cleaning routine definitely varies at night. Like sometimes I'll clean a lot more rooms and a lot more spaces like I'm doing on this evening. But at the very minimum, my kitchen and living room is usually clean when everyone goes to bed. And that's just what works for me. I feel like it really does set me up for success the next day. And it just makes the biggest difference in how the next day actually goes. And the funny thing is with it, I feel like I can spend, you know, 10, 20, minutes at night doing this but if I don't do that it's going to cost me a lot more than 10 or 20 minutes in the morning if that makes sense like 
Once we got the trash and recycling taken outside, we just moved downstairs into our living room and we were kind of doing a general tidy, like picking up everything off the floor, getting all of the couch pillows nice and organized and fixed. And then also we are closing the blinds down here for the night just for some of that privacy. Also, I just have to say as I'm doing this voiceover, it is just so wild to me to see how much Luke has grown over the years. Let me know if you've been here for a while or if you've seen any of those videos when Luke was really little. He used to do like cooking with Luke and he would join me in some videos here and there. And he was just so tiny and now he is like almost as tall as me, maybe like half an inch to go. Now he is kind of in that preteen stage, so we don't always see eye to eye. But actually we recently started doing dinner together once a week, just him and I. And what we do is we will put phones away the entire dinner, like the drive to wherever we go, everything. We will not have phones or any kind of distraction. And we will just visit one-on-one -on -one, and it has been so good for us. We both really look forward to it each week and it has just been strengthening our relationship so much, which I feel is so incredibly important, especially as he kind of goes into the difficult teenage years. I know my mom used to always tell us, if you can get through the teenage years, you'll be okay. And I kind of felt like she was being dramatic when I was younger, but now as I've gone through my own teenage years and now as I'm kind of entering back into them as a parent with Luke, I totally understand what she meant and I don't feel like she was being dramatic at all, especially with just how the world is nowadays. They are entering into the whole teen era even earlier and I really just never want my kids to feel like they have to navigate it alone. So nights like tonight, dinner dates, one-on-one -on -one chats, those are some of the absolute best ways that I feel like I can spend my time. If I could go back, be 17 again, yeah I would, just to see all my friends. Running around the city acting crazy like we used to do. I wish I could turn back time oh, ooh, ooh. Stay up all night singing songs on the terrace We didn't mind sitting out in the cold It wasn't possible to make us embarrassed We were free Do you remember stealing smokes from your parents? Sometimes we got a bit out of control So we have had these pots and pans now for a couple of weeks or maybe coming on a month. I'm not <laughs> exactly sure, but I love them so much and I like them at first, but I definitely wanted to like check them out a little bit more before I told you guys all about them. So they are the hex clad brand. I will link them down below. They're definitely a bit of an investment. However, they work super, super great. So we bought them because we have an induction cooktop, but you definitely don't have to have an induction cooktop to use them or anything. But what I love about them best is that they are like a hybrid pan. So basically you are getting a nonstick surface on like 90% of the pan or maybe more 95%. I'm not sure the ratio, but a ton of the pan is nonstick. And then if you can see those little hexagons in there, those are actually stainless steel so you kind of get like the best of both worlds you get the durability of the stainless steel you also are able to sear things really really nice and get like nice crisp coatings on everything but it also has a non-stick surface so it's just really a neat thing i had not really heard about these pans prior to getting them but kyle had done a bunch of research and he had already found these pans and was really interested in them so when we found them on a really good deal he wanted to snatch them up and i went with it and now i'm just so in love with them like i cannot recommend them enough you can take me high, high, high. 
Around 12.30 or so, Luke reached his limit and decided to go to bed. So I told him good night and I just continued on with the dishes in the kitchen. And I actually just really loved having him join me tonight. I was kind of surprised a few hours earlier when he said he wanted to stay up and clean with me, but I definitely did not ask questions. I happily took that opportunity to hang out with him. During the school year, we definitely don't get the chance to have a lot of late nights together like this, but during the summer, it's a lot more relaxed at our house. The kids do not have near as many things that they have to get done or, you know, places to be. And so the summer is a bit of a different story at our house. It's just a lot more relaxed. You can take me high. Feels like I can fly. Young ones come crushing. These items are for our neighbors who are so kindly watching over our dog and cats while we're going away on our trip to Montana. I wanted to make them like a little gift basket just to show our appreciation and I'll show you kind of how I put that all together in just a minute. Most nights when I clean up, I actually only have the cabinet lights on, the ones that Kyle and I installed several weeks ago now, and it is just so peaceful and I feel like it gives off the perfect amount of light and it kind of just creates like a really calming mood. So I totally love having just only those lights on in the evening, but it's funny how we just finished our kitchen renovation like a couple weeks ago 
and already whenever I see old pictures or I see old videos pop up and I watch them for a minute, it looks so strange to me to see the old kitchen. We definitely had our old kitchen way, way longer, like two years. Then we've had our renovated kitchen because it's only been a few weeks, but it's just amazing to me like how our minds adapt to things so quickly. I love this song so much. I feel like the past several years have been very different from what life used to feel like. I don't know if any of you kind of still feel that way, but it definitely started with 2020 and sometimes things are just so overwhelming and life and my mind, it feels so chaotic and I find myself only able to calm my mind when I think of the things that truly matter in this life. Like this song says, these windows could shatter to the ground, these walls could fall right down because this house is not my home. Rumble into dust because you've become my home. Sounds kind of cheesy when I say it, but when I listen to that song, I just feel it like in my soul. And I feel like sometimes we just overcomplicate life, thinking that we need all these things. You know, we're comparing our lives to everyone else's and we're overthinking everything. But in the end, all we need is each other. And of course, our basic needs, shelter, food, water, etc. But past that, it's just extras. And that's something I actually really want to work on this year is just not overcomplicating life. A lot easier said than done, of course, but that's something I'm going to be working on. It's the next morning. We got so much done last night, but I didn't want to run the vacuums or anything just because it was like so, so late. I didn't want to disturb anyone's sleep. Originally, I was thinking I would just sweep it all, but I got too tired and I was like, you know, we'll just do it the next day. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and tackle the floors. We need to vacuum the carpets. And then we're gonna vacuum and mop the card floors. And then I also want to put together those little gift baskets. So we're having two of our friends watch over our dog and our cats. And so since we are gonna be gone for a couple weeks, I just wanted to do a little something for each of them. So I got these little containers like these little bins from walmart and then over here we just have like some different popcorns a bottle of like the martinelli's apple cider stuff and then a gift card and i'm just gonna stick it inside there and i think that'll be really cute and i'll just write like a handwritten note a little bit later to go send to them i got a lot of lessons left to learn but i'm not even close Through my inhibition, I've become quite sure that I love you the most. That this could be the easiest thing if I'd let it. Our friends are so kind and so sweet and I know that this is not necessary for them like they would happily help us out without even giving it a thought but they are just helping us out so much and I know this will mean a lot to them and honestly our trip would not be possible without them because boarding animals is crazy expensive and we just have a ton of animals so I really want them to know how grateful we are. That's why I'm making this for them. But anyway, I am keeping things pretty simple, but I do love using reusable bins when gifting and I'll either find them from Walmart, you can also find a lot of baskets and bins thrifting, or you can even find ones that you may already have and you don't use anymore. But I feel like it not only looks really nice, but it also gives a little added function because then they can turn around and use that bin in their own home. And then right inside, I just added some tissue paper from Dollar Tree and then I added those goodies right on top and it's simple, practical, and super cute. But here I am with you. So I put my hesitations on the show. Cause this is what I choose. This will be the easiest thing if I let it. And I can't be too afraid. I'm leaving everything on the table You can have my heart Luke and Liam actually went with some friends to do one of those escape rooms. I haven't ever done one of those personally, but I totally want to. Like, it's on my list of things I want to try out. Maybe for a date night, we'll try that or something. But anyway... Noah was home because he was actually one year too young to go. Next year, he'll definitely go with his brothers, but he came down and wanted to help me. So I, of course, let him help me mop the floors. So he is just using our Roborock Dyad Pro to vacuum and mop the hard floors. And after a few minutes, he decided he would rather be in charge of vacuuming the rugs instead. So I took over the mopping and we moved into the rest of the areas in the main floor. And he went ahead and vacuumed the rugs and I tackled the hard floor. And I just can't bring myself to give up right now Not this way Cause I love you and I wanna hold you And we're all in gray Oh, love like this don't come around Don't come around No, a love like this don't come around Don't come around Every day Every day
I am always amazed at what gets sucked up with our Roborock Diet Pro. I love that thing so much. It's definitely become like a must-have in our house. And I just checked because I know they had a hard time keeping it in stock like it kept selling out earlier in the year, but they have it in stock and it's also on sale right now. So I will link it down below if you are in the market for something really good to clean your floors. Like if you have a lot of hardwood floors, I could not recommend it to you enough. So I will have that linked down below along with anything else that you saw me clean with in today's video. It always feels so good to wake up to a clean house and even though I didn't get to the floors the night before, it like wasn't a big deal because I wasn't behind the power curve waking up in the morning. Like I was just able to tackle the floors and I didn't have to do any other work to get to them. So I am just such a huge fan of like a really good nighttime routine. Now I don't always clean all of the rooms in the house like this. But I definitely try to clean the kitchen and living room every night. That way we can wake up and not feel overwhelmed the next day. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you enjoy these after dark clean with me videos let me know in the comments i would definitely love to share more with you guys they are some of my favorites to share with you guys because i just feel like they are so calming and relaxing and if you are in need of some more cleaning motivation and if you want some recipe ideas i'm going to go ahead and link my homemaking playlist on the right side of the screen that's going to give you so much motivation and lots and lots of new easy recipe ideas so you'll definitely love that one. I hope you have an amazing day because you absolutely deserve it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we just got back from our vacation up in Montana. It was so much fun. I don't think we realized like how much we needed a vacation, but now that we're back, we're just feeling like refreshed, but we have nothing at the house. Like we ate up everything that we could. We gave anything that was going to expire to friends, things like that. And so now we need to restock our fridge. Our pantry is, you know, fairly okay. We were only gone for a couple weeks. We need to do like a big grocery shop. And actually when Kyle and I went to Floor and Decor to do our backsplash, we got all of our tiles from there. There was a Winco like right next door and I've known it's been there, but it's like 20 minutes away or so. And so I just don't make it a priority to go there all the time. But we went in there and I was just like reminded of how incredible their prices are. So we are actually going to go down to Winco today and get all of the things that we need for our grocery shop. I will share a haul when we get back home. But before we do that, I want to make a list because I don't want to go in there blind and buy a bunch of things we don't need and miss all the things we do. And then I'm also going to be going through my cookbook. I'm getting back into like hardcore paleo because I just need it to feel good. This is like hands down my favorite cookbook that I've gotten for paleo. So I'm gonna go through here, kind of meal plan for what I want to make this week and then make up my list. We will head down to the grocery store. I wanna hear you say yeah. I also have some weekly grocery store ads. I feel like typically they're not gonna be the best deals other than when you get the actual sales from their ads. So I did kind of write down last night some sales that I saw and I'll go to Winco first, see what I can get there. And then anything that I'm finding is like a way better deal on like their special sales. I might stop there on the way home and just pick those things up.
So now that I have my meals and most of my list planned out, I'm just gonna go in the fridge. I'm gonna see like what we have to make sure I don't overbuy anything. And then I'll also check the pantry. Little noodle <laughs> soup. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kyla just found a pack of that like little noodle soup torn apart in the theater room. And when we got home, there was like, it was all over the floor of the pantry and that definitely has Felix written all over it. Just like the bacon bits that he ate. So naughty. I think I have my list all made up. Okay, so here is kind of like meals that we're doing. Breakfast is easy, but I did put like a couple different breakfasts that I wanna try. And then these are our dinner meals. And then this is kind of like my shopping list. I did go through this last night, like I said, with the store ads and then I realized that two of them were from the previous week while we were gone. So this is the only one that's like actually correct. So I'm just kind of going through there to see if there's anything left and then that I missed and um, then we'll be ready to go. All right, let me know in the comments, what store do you shop at typically every week? So I personally love Aldi and Winco if I'm doing like in-store shopping. I just find that their prices can never be beat. And then I also love Walmart, especially Walmart Plus for delivery whenever the week is just like so busy and I don't have time to actually go to the grocery store. That saves me more times than not. But if you want to stretch your dollar the furthest, you're probably going to want to shop at multiple stores. Back when we were in the military and I was a stay-at-home mom, I would shop at two to three stores every single week. I would typically go to the commissary, then I would go to our local grocery store for all of their sale deals, and then I would also go to like a Sam's Club or a Costco to get certain things in bulk. And that is the way that I was able to save the most money for our family every single week. Now, I also wanted to mention if you do have a Winco near you, you'll see that they have a lot of price comparisons showing like your local stores, your local Walmart, your local Safeway, whatever it might be. And it shows you that you are really getting the best deal. Now that's not to say that every single time it's going to be the best deal. You definitely have to pay attention to that for yourself. But something that you're going to want to do every single time you go to like any grocery store is compare your price per unit to the other items right next to it in the store. So for example, if you're looking for ketchup, make sure that you're checking on the price per unit because if one size is on sale or one brand is on sale, it might be cheaper than it typically is and that might be the best deal that you're going to get this week. So I am constantly showing the kids whenever we go to the store together and they are always walking around kind of showing me the best deals that they can find. And I love being able to teach them that because why spend extra money when you definitely do not have to? Once we got done at Winco, I headed over to Safeway to get a few of their great sale items, mostly fruit and some random things. But one of the things that was on sale was their watermelon and I can never remember how to pick a good watermelon. So wish me luck because I just kind of guessed. And also, is this not the most satisfying thing to watch your total just drop like that? I love it. The smile is the ridiculous rush I get when I get like super good deals on coupons. <laughs> I'm just like cheesing the whole entire way out of the store. I don't know if I've seen you that happy in a long time. We paid one third of what everything cost there. One third. All right, we just got back from Winco and then we ran into Safeway really quick. For everything, I think we spent about $230, including tax and everything. So I feel like we did really well, especially considering like we got a lot of meat, we got just 
a lot of stuff, like a lot of produce. And then of course we do have, you know, some pantry staples and things. I'm gonna turn it around and kind of show you what we got. But first I'm gonna show you what we are actually going to be eating for meals this week. I got this menu board a while back and I actually have it saved in my Amazon favorites down below. But something that saves me tons of money and reduces my stress every single week is going through and meal planning. Okay, so this is our menu this week. So Monday, which is today, we are having lemon artichoke chicken. Uh, Tuesday is tacos and taco salad. Wednesday is chicken and veggie kebabs. I shared a reel with this recipe. It's so, so good. Um, I'll have it linked down below. And then Thursday is going to be leftovers. Friday is pizza and movie night. I will probably just eat leftovers on this night. Um, Saturday is buffalo chicken lettuce wraps. And then I'm also going to have like jambalaya for the kids who don't love the spiciness. Um, and then Sunday is going to be Mexican chicken soups. So that's what we're having for dinners this week. Okay, so I have everything all kind of laid out a little bit in order. So I have like some meats, our milks, and then I have a bunch of produce and then kind of some random bits on the other side. So starting over here, I got some chicken breast. This was such a good deal. It was $1.48 a pound. So I got two of them. This is going to go for, I believe, four different dinners. So I'll basically just split a pack in half and we'll do that for each dinner. I got some bacon. I got hickory bacon and also an applewood bacon uh, that's just gonna be like for breakfast then I got some pepperoni this can go for sandwiches for the boys and also just for snacking I've not ever tried this brand but it looked pretty good and this is going to go for the jambalaya that I'll make this week I also got some different deli meat for sandwiches for the boys milk for like pancakes cereal whatever we need we either do oat milk or rice milk but they didn't have any rice milk and then I got coconut milk for myself. Then I grabbed some lettuce for salads, just easy to make, like it's already pre-made. Pineapple for kebabs, apples for snacking, avocados to put on pretty much anything. Nobody else loves avocados other than me, so those are pretty much mine. I got some red potatoes for like different side dishes. When we were in Montana, I got just like fresh garlic and I haven't gotten fresh garlic in a long time just cause I get like the jarred garlic and it was so much better. So I think I'm gonna go back to kind of doing that. Then I grabbed some lettuce for lettuce wraps, celery for snacking, sweet potatoes for just like different side dishes, some iceberg lettuce for tacos, lots of bell peppers because these are going to go for different recipes like the kebabs and just different things this week, but also they were on such a good deal. So I grabbed, I think four, some cucumbers for snacking, grapes, they were on a pretty good deal. Spinach, this is mostly going to go in like eggs and smoothies. Then I got some cilantro for seasoning different Mexican dishes up, like tacos and things like that. I also got lots of lemons. I think I got 10 lemons. They were on a really good deal. Deal. and I've been putting lemons in like different recipes for the summer making lemonade things like that this was on sale for a dollar so I figured we could just either snack on some blueberries or put them in like pancakes for the boys green onions for different recipes same with green peppers like this will go in jambalaya and on the kebabs and also just snacking some zucchinis because I wanted to try that zucchini pancakes then I got some limes for I believe it's the chicken soup that I'm making later this week and maybe something else onions for like everything some oranges which these were on sale at Safeway so I just grabbed a bunch for snacking we got some strawberries they were on a pretty good deal so I got those for the boys these cherries were like a dollar fifty pound it was a really good deal I also got this watermelon that was on a super good sale so we definitely tried to like shop the sales, especially like seasonal fruits and vegetables. It saves a lot of money and you're eating a lot more fresh food. Then I picked up some bananas. We will freeze these and make like banana ice cream. We also put them in smoothies and just snack on those. Got some cream of wheat. Kyle and the boys love this stuff. Bagels for breakfast. For the boys, we got some eggs. 
we go through eggs like crazy. So I got two of the 18 packs. We'll probably be done with that by the end of the week. I got these for the boys. I mean, I know they're not the healthiest thing, but they love these. I used to get these when I was a kid. So anytime we see them, we just try to grab a couple because they're really fun. Noah really wants me to make some homemade fruit snacks. So I got this to try that out. I got some ice cream just for the boys to kind of snack and that needs to get in the freezer. My favorite bread. I don't eat this, but the boys and Kyle will also make sandwiches whatever we need with that this is just tuna I got a bunch of this because it was on sale and you had to like buy 10 but then they're 50 cents each so we'll make tuna salad with that I got some yummy salsa we got this kind in Montana and it was really good so we're trying like the medium spice and I think it should be yummy. Then I got some sour cream for tacos for everybody else. I got some cherries. Oh, these are going to be blended up to make the fruit snacks. And then also I will just put this with like some coconut, like shredded coconut. And it's so, so yummy. Like you thaw them out. Super like yummy dessert. I got some hummus. You can dip vegetables, pretzels, whatever you have. I got some tomato paste. I can't remember what recipe this is for. Oh, I think it's for the soup. I got it for the soup. I also needed some dark brown sugar some artichoke hearts. This one ended up being in the wrong spot, so it was a bit more expensive than I was expecting, but it is like a non-GMO one, which is really great. And then I really love the seasoning. Typically, I'll just make my own seasoning blends, but this Kinder's or Kinder's brand, probably Kinder's, this is a really good one. It's like really clean ingredients, and they were normally $2 on sale or 50 cents each when you buy 10. Then I got some yogurt just for, mostly for Liam. He's like a big yogurt fan, but any of the boys that want this for a snack. This is like so funny, but it looks like an energy drink or something, but it's literally just mountain water. We got it one time, and it was really yummy, and we were both really thirsty, so we grabbed Grab just a couple of those. Then last but not least, I got two different cereals for the boys for like a quick breakfast and some chips to go with us also we got. So that is everything that we picked up from the store. And this is definitely more than we would normally get, but we were pretty depleted. So we kind of had to stock up on a few things. you guys I need your help let me know all of your tips for condiments and random things in your fridge like pickles and olives and all that kind of stuff I feel like they take up so much room in my fridge and I've honestly like decluttered a lot I've gotten rid of a bunch of them and these are the ones that we use all the time so I kind of feel like if I were to declutter more, I would just end up buying them again. So I just need to find a way to really organize them all. And also if I can figure out this whole fridge organization thing, let me know if you would like to see an in-depth fridge organization video. I'm definitely going to be adding my pantry to my monthly cleaning routine because whenever I stay on top of it, it does stay nice for a while and it makes such a huge difference. But on the other hand, once it starts to go, it goes really fast.
I always get questions about this little blue apple in our crisper drawer. It will actually keep your produce fresher for longer. So I have one in our produce drawer and then I have another one in a bottom drawer that has like our apples and oranges and things like that. Seeing Luke pop in the kitchen for just a moment reminded me that so many of you guys left such sweet comments on Monday's video when Luke stayed up and cleaned with me. We did an after dark clean with me. It was so super relaxing. If you want some relaxing clean motivation, you can go check that out next, but it was so nice just spending that time together. And I love seeing all your sweet comments on that and replying to you guys. So if you left a comment and enjoyed that video, thank you. And this little guy right here is a terracotta disc, I believe. I got it on Amazon from your guys' suggestion and it's been working amazingly. So thank you for that tip. My goal every single week whenever we go grocery shopping or if we get groceries delivered, I always like to prep our produce out quickly because chances are if I put them back in the fridge not prepped, I'm not gonna take the time to pull them out and re-prep them later on. So this is pretty much my one realistic chance to get things prepped out. But I love these little veggie tray containers or that's what I call them. I basically got them because I wanted like a DIY veggie tray that I could have every single week and it has worked amazing. I feel like we always snack on them whenever we have them made up. And as usual, I will have those as well as everything else that I'm using today linked in the description box below so you can find it easy. And if you can't find a link for something that you're looking for, let me know in the comments and I'll try to locate that for you. Berries are something that we really enjoy during the summer because during the summer they are all in season and during the winter they are not and they are a lot more expensive. So we still have them in the winter but definitely not as often and most of the time they're going to be purchased frozen just because it's going to be like the most cost effective way to get berries. But during the summer we love them. 
I also wanted to mention I got these berry containers from Timu. I believe they were about $6. We've had them about a month or so and I love them so much. Maybe we've had them longer than that. I'm not really sure, but either way, I got them from Timu and they are incredible and I just cannot ever believe the deals that I get on there. So I will have a link for those down below as well. I cannot tell you guys how good it feels to get the produce prepped immediately after a big grocery shop. It just makes me feel like I'm set up and ready for the week. And honestly, that's another tip for saving money is prepping your produce because it will help you avoid wasting your produce, which of course saves you money right there. So there are so many different ways to save money, even in this crazy economy where everything is so inflated. There are lots of smart things that you can do to help stretch your dollar and put more food on your table for less. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today. And if you made it this far, drop a little emoji below because you are incredible and I am so incredibly grateful for you. Also, I did want to remind you, I am uploading now twice a week. So there will be a new video every Monday and Thursday, but next Monday we are going to be decluttering my home and it's going to feel so good. So if you want some decluttering motivation, make sure you're subscribed, make sure your bell notification is turned on and I will see you right back here next week. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be decluttering our home. I am going to be focusing on like a few different areas just so I don't get super overwhelmed with trying to declutter the entire house in one day. But today we are going to be starting out in our guest bedroom, which <laughs> I have to clean up in here a little bit, but I have like all of our extra home decor in here in these closet things. Kyla and I kind of Put these together they're from ikea but we have a ton of stuff in each one of these cabinets they are bursting we have stuff up top like we just have stuff everywhere and i have no more room so i need to go through and declutter anything that i just don't use or i don't love anymore and then i also need to go in my bedroom and declutter my nightstands our dresser things like that and get things just feeling a little bit more free and not so bogged down so let's go ahead and get into it I wanna hear you say yeah <laughs> I love to keep extra decor to kind of change things up. Of course, it saves money and it's just a more practical thing to do than to go out all the time and buy new decor. And so I often will find really neutral items that I can kind of change out here and there but I keep everything that I'm not actually displaying in this cabinet area. And I definitely need to go through it and not keep everything because as you can see, every nook and cranny is fully used up. And I feel like I'm always passing over certain items each time I go to redecorate different areas in the house. So those type of things will definitely be getting decluttered today. And then the things that I'm always kind of rotating in and out, those are the only things that I'm going to be keeping. Now, before I can start decluttering, I need to tidy up the guest bedroom really quickly. Now I actually did a full room makeover on this space maybe a year and a half ago or so. However, we are still using a curtain as a door. It just hasn't really been in the budget and it hasn't been at the top of our list or our like project list, I guess. We've had so many other things that we've been working on instead. Now we've been hoping to hire someone to install a door here. We're thinking kind of like a glass French doors, something like that, maybe frosted glass. I'm not entirely sure, but this room does offer a lot of light into the entryway. And so we don't want to get rid of that. However, it is very expensive to get that done. So I'm kind of thinking maybe Kyle and I will try to DIY some French doors ourselves and save some money that way. That's definitely something we haven't done in the past. And so I am feeling a bit intimidated by it, but what's the worst that can happen, right? All right, a lot of this is like not super exciting, but this is like our, or some of it is our subscribe and save stuff on Amazon. And we don't get it like every month. Like we will only get this maybe once every, 
don't know if it's like three or six months or something. Anyway, but this is the cat food that we use for especially the boy cats because Felix had like some urinary tract stuff. So this is what we have to get for him now. I think I have like a big, it's like a pack of like six that I have this coming like every few months and they only sent one. So I'll have to check and see if they're sending the rest. This is just for our automatic cat litter thing. Then we got these trash bags and we order these ones because we get like the extra large size because a while back we traded out to like a larger trash can. Then this is something Noah had ordered with some money from his birthday. So that's just kind of random. These I'm really excited about. They're just like little silicone like roll-up mats that you can use for drying dishes or fruits and vegetables, things like that. Then I got some batteries. We have toothpaste. These are some gummies that Kyle takes at night to sleep better and some deodorant. Lot of these things I really love and then a lot I know like I come in and change out seasonal decor and things and I always leave certain ones in here so those are the ones I'm going to be getting rid of um, I might sell them I might donate some I might give some to my sisters but basically I'm going to do what I always do and I declare and I'm gonna pull every single thing out probably just one shelf at a time and then slowly kind of put it back in and then anything left on the bed is what we will not be keeping Let me know, do you have decor that you change out often throughout the year? And I'm not necessarily talking about holiday decor like Christmas or fall or things like that, but just like everyday decor that kind of is good all year round. I really actually just started doing this when I started getting into like room makeovers and things like that. I would purchase things for upcoming makeovers. And so of course I would just be storing them. And then I kind of began to start accumulating some extra things and I would start swapping out my decor throughout the year. And I really just learned that you can totally make old decor feel brand new again, simply by swapping it out from time to time, almost like cycling through your kids' toys. I don't know if you guys have seen that. I'm sure most of you have, especially if you have kids, but some people actually go through their kids' toys and cycle them out, maybe store them in the garage or in a closet or something for a month or so. And then when they pull the old toys back out, they feel brand new again to the kids. And so I feel like this is the same type of thing, but for adults. A lot of this if not maybe all of it was just shoved into like the top two sections up here and this is all like DIY kind of things so I have like paint brushes spray paints tape like just random bits I'm probably gonna keep most of this but I do have some little bins that I had in the garage just from previous projects so I'm going to organize this set it out back in there and then anything that's like no longer good or I no longer use, I can go ahead and declutter. Oh 
Okay, so here I have spray paints. This is kind of like mostly painting tools and things. I have like some rub and buff. This is just different kind of tapes and strings. This is like rug tape. This is actually all the leather pulls for like the way we hang curtains. Some drapery tape. And then over here, I kind of have like some random bits. So like these are just some shelves. These are some label things. And then over here, I have like drawer pulls for various projects. And then in here, I'm going to have command strips. And then actually all of this just needs to go out to like my wall painting section out in the garage. thing I struggle with the most is like these are things that are in such good shape and so I don't want to get rid of them but also I never grab for them anymore like I'm not super into like decor with words on it things like that and so a lot of these are kind of like the farmhouse signs with all the words and <laughs> all that stuff so I think I am going to let them go even though it is a bummer to me but someone else who really likes this style still can go ahead and use it and it'll stop just like gathering dust in my closet or in my little space and also it'll actually get used by somebody. This is one that I have to keep because it's just so fun and summery and my friend actually made this for me so I'm gonna keep this one probably put it up in the loft for the boys. Whenever you're decluttering, don't feel like you have to declutter something just to declutter it. I've definitely done that in the past and I end up going back out and rebuying things or having declutter regret where I wish I wouldn't have gotten rid of something just because I'm trying to like almost over declutter things. So I always say keep what you love and what you always grab for, but anything that doesn't fit into those categories, let it go and I can almost guarantee you will not miss it. Finally, we are moving into the final sections, but first I am clearing off the bed because thankfully I have decluttered a lot of things and I just needed to kind of move that off out of the way. That way I could sort through the remaining items. But this final section is actually really mostly full of linens, like curtains, pillow covers, table runners, things like that. Now on their own, they don't take up a lot of space, which I love and it's one of the reasons I love things like pillow covers. However, when you have a lot of something, it definitely accumulates and it can grow into taking up a lot of space. And so I'm just only going to be keeping the things that I actually grab for.
I wanted to go ahead and share some decluttering tips that I've learned over the years. I have been decluttering for years and years. It's always just like an ongoing process. But one of the things that I've learned over the years that has helped me the most has been remembering that just because something cost you money in the past doesn't mean you need to keep it. Keep in mind that the money has already been spent and now it is still costing you. Every single thing that you have in your home is costing you something, whether that is space, whether it's your time that you need to maintain it and clean it and store it. So whatever the case may be, just because you've spent money on it in the past, don't feel like that means that you need to keep it now. You've already paid for it, so if it's no longer serving you, don't continue paying for it in other ways. Ah, you guys, this is feeling so good. Decluttering always makes me want to work on like every other space in the house, but I do have to stay focused. Otherwise, I will have every single room in this house torn apart. I'll be decluttering everything and also like not decluttering any certain room kind of thing. It'll just be chaos. So I really do have to stay focused, but this does motivate me so, so much. I feel like whenever I deep clean an area or when I start decluttering things or when I get something organized, those are the things that motivate me so, so much. I got this whole little cabinet organized. There is still quite a bit in here, but I feel like everything in here I want to keep and like continue kind of cycling in and out. And it just feels so good to have it nice and organized in here. Look how pretty is that now? I love it. And I'll turn you around and show you all the stuff that I pulled out of this cabinet. It's a lot. I kind of feel like it's kind of close to half maybe maybe not quite half but maybe like a third and then also look at this <laughs> I'm gonna turn you around this is Benji and Ollie ever since we got Ollie he's just been like attached to Benji which has been so cute Benji was like the first one that kind of accepted him into the house and so Ollie's been like his little shadow ever since little yin and yang so sweet hey Ollie Benji is just asleep. Like, thanks for cleaning the bed off for me. So, over here, this is what I'm going to be getting rid of. I'm not sure yet if we'll go, well, that's our mud water that I need to put away, but the rest of this, and actually this bin right here is also donate. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna donate or sell or what I'll do with this, but these are all the items that we are deciding to not keep and it'll be good to just clear out that space. Now that I have everything all tackled in there, we are going to move into my bedroom. We not only need to get the drawers and dressers and nightstands and all that actually like decluttered, but I also have still not unpacked from a vacation. I've been really trying to be good about that, like unpacking within a day or so, but it's been like, a week and <laughs> we still haven't unpacked that's just the reality of it but i have the boys suitcase right here i have kyle's in my suitcase on the floor right here that we've been obviously kind of like pulling from but i'm gonna go ahead and put those things away clean up the room a little bit and then we will get to decluttering the dressers We are just moving right along from one finished room to a room full of chaos and clutter, but at least now I have the motivation to tackle this room and make it just as peaceful and decluttered as our guest bedroom. First off, again, we have to tidy things up, so I am starting with our bed.
We recently went on a trip to Montana and we used two suitcases for our whole family. So I am just grabbing out three regular laundry baskets and sorting all the boys clothes into them. And then that way the boys can grab them, bring them up to the rooms and put them away. And very easily and quickly the suitcase can be unpacked. But one thing that I actually started doing on vacations is I started doing a load of laundry on the very last day of the vacation. And that way I didn't come home and have already like a huge load or a couple loads of laundry to do when I get home. It's just been like so much more peaceful and I feel like it's worked out way nicer for us. So if you have a vacation planned for the remaining part of the summer or any time in the holidays and you have access to a washer or dryer, I would definitely suggest trying that out and see if it works for your family as well as it works for ours. All right, tell me honestly, how long does it take you to unpack once you get home from a vacation? For years and years, or I guess basically my entire life, it always took me like at least a week to unpack all of our suitcases and everything. But then, I don't know if it was like maybe two or three years ago, I got into a really good habit where I would get home and unpack either that night or the next morning, depending on like what time of day I get home. And it felt so good, but somehow I slipped back into my old bad habit apparently, but I definitely want to get back into my good habit of unpacking as soon as I get home. It really doesn't take very long and it does feel so, so good. I'm finally unpacked after being home for like a week, but the bedroom looks really, really nice. I always love when it's like fully clean in here. It just feels so nice and peaceful. So now I'm going to tackle the decluttering stuff and I'm trying to decide if I want to like kind of where I want to start. I think I'm going to go ahead and start on my nightstand just because I will know like if I want to keep anything or not, but it is like a small area So it's going to be like pretty easy to declutter and it'll give me that instant like boost of motivation to keep going with the rest All right moment of truth. Let's see what's inside. So right here. I have like contacts and glasses Back here. I pretty much never grab for anything. These are just like different maybe supplements that I used to take that I don't really anymore Aw, and this is Noah's little amber necklace. I think it actually broke which is why I have it in here But he wore this for like a couple years. So I always keep that but I'm not really organized in there and a lot of stuff I don't need or use I haven't used contact solution in like a year because I use Like the daily ones now a lot of this I pretty much don't grab for other than some of like the creams and then Pretty much same thing in here Some random clothes bits a book. I actually love this book so I do keep this one in here because occasionally like I'll just go through and read it again but all right let's tackle that one It has literally been so long since I've gone through my nightstand that I actually forgot that it has this really pretty like velvet style bottom on the top drawer. It has just been forever since I've seen it. So I was happy to say hello again and get it all nice and clean. Okay, so the funny thing about this is I open these drawers every single day and every single day I'm just like overwhelmed when I open them. It's annoying because it's hard to open them or I can't get to what I need, but then I close them very quickly and I forget about all the chaos 
and it just gets pushed to the bottom of my list once again. But comment below with a space that you have been avoiding or you haven't had time to declutter or organize. Let me know what that space is. And then when you go and actually tackle it and get it all cleared out, come back and let me know that you did it. And I will be your personal accountability partner on this. And trust me, it will feel so good. So I mostly have a lot of papers and stuff from the boys. I have these cozy socks. I want to be a cozy sock person, but I just end up always grabbing from my regular socks. So I'm gonna go ahead and donate those. I have a few books. Um, I actually didn't end up reading them, but they were like all the hype and I ordered them and then did not read them. Some old glasses, I think I can donate these. Random bits and then just some more papers that I have to actually like put away. Now let's dive into Kyle's nightstand. So we'll start on the bottom. His is not near the mess that mine is, but it still needs some work, especially that drawer. My mom and um, everyone gave this to Kyle as a joke. I don't really remember exactly how it happened, but we always would tease Kyle about being like the biggest Justin Bieber fan. I don't think he ever <laughs> was at all, but he still has this like little fan kit card that we got him or that they got him like, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years ago. And it has a nice spot in his nightstand and I just never take it out. <laughs> are ready for my excuse of why it's gotten this bad is it's been on my list I've been wanting to do it for a really long time and I just haven't gotten around to it <laughs> but no more excuses <sighs> we are gonna dive into the dresser it's gonna feel so much better later today in like 15 20 30 minutes once I'm done with this because it's felt pretty rough for a while so I'll show you the treacherous before and we will declutter a ton from this one. This one I did just like steal the little caddy that was in here so I did have a little tiny tiny bit of help in this one but not much.
I have had a junk slash keepsake dresser drawer my entire adult life and I've never really thought anything about it until I was decluttering it today and then I just realized I totally don't need that. I know that there would be a way better use for this space, especially since I do already have keepsakes in my closet. So why do I need to take up an entire huge dresser drawer for all my extra stuff? So I decided today to go ahead and just clear it all out. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what I wanna do with this drawer. It's like fully empty right now, it turns out. It's just a bunch of like things that I'm saving, like special things. I'd rather just put that in a bin that I already have in our closet and just keep it safe that way. So now we're going to go into like the sock drawer and kind of organize that. Let me know, do you hang your pants or do you keep them folded up in a drawer? And if you fold them or if you fold shirts or whatever, do you fold them fancy or just enough to get the job done? So as far as hanging up my pants, I feel like I go back and forth. I think it's easier for me to fold them and put them in a drawer, but I actually like getting to them in the closet when they're hung up. So I don't know, I go back and forth on that. And then for the folded clothes in my drawers, I am definitely like a get the job done kind of girl. So I don't do any kind of fancy folding. I wish I did, but it's just not high enough on my priority list. So I'm just like, it's folded good enough. Close the drawer, we're done. Okay, I'm totally gonna have to reorganize this. Like I want to get some bins. I have these and I've actually had them for a long time, but they're just like only this tall and so if you stack the clothes up higher, it's not gonna do much good. So I'm going to need to get like some larger bins to organize things, but for now, I'm definitely decluttering some so I can go ahead and kind of organize them a little bit in here. So everything that I'm putting into this basket is all of the stuff that I am decluttering from my dresser drawer and then also in both mine and Kyle's nightstands. And it really made such a big difference getting all of this out of our drawers. And now every time I open up my dresser drawers, it is just so beyond peaceful. I really am kicking myself and just wishing that I had done this months ago when I really wanted to. This poor plant has been with us for, I don't know, probably like three or four years. We had it when we lived in our Utah house for a few years, but it really struggled while we were on vacation this last time. And actually a lot of my plants kind of struggled this last time for some reason, but I am desperately trying to nurse this guy back to health. So if you have any tips, let me know because I really don't want to lose this one. I'm wondering if I maybe need to repot him or something, but please wish me luck on this plant because I think I'm gonna need it. All right, you guys, this is the final reveal of how everything turned out once I decluttered. I do definitely need to get rid of some of my socks, but we'll kind of do that slowly, I guess. But if you are not already, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join the family. This coming Thursday, so in just a few days, we are going to be doing a dining room makeover on a very minimal to $0 budget. So I cannot wait to see you then and show you how this space is going to be transformed. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have an incredible day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.
Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing some deep, deep cleaning. So we are not going to be doing a whole ton of like, you know, your everyday cleaning. However, if you do need some of that motivation, I have tons and tons of cleaning videos here on the channel. Definitely go ahead and check those out. But we are going to start out with a quick, quick family tidy. We do this like morning and night here in the summer and it makes such a huge difference. So we're going to go ahead and like quickly tidy up the whole main living area. And then we are going to get down to business and we are going to deep clean all of those nitty gritty spaces. We have things like the trash can, the window sills. I'm going to be stripping laundry, all the super satisfying deep cleaning things. We have a lot to get done, so let's get to it. Alexa announced, okay everybody come down for a family tidy. Announcing. Okay everybody come down for a family tidy. All right, let's do this. So I have shared about our family tidy that we do twice a day typically, usually around 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning and then one right before bed around like eight o'clock or so. And honestly, this has been one of the greatest things that we've started doing this summer. During the school year, we do have like a nightly cleanup, but with everybody home during the summer, I feel like summers can feel very chaotic. The house can definitely get very overrun very quickly with everyone being home all the time. And so having that expectation of everyone pitching in twice a day, it just keeps things very nice and clean most of the time or like, you know, generally tidy because we're not doing any kind of deep cleaning. But I also feel like there have been a lot of benefits with this in that the kids actually are maintaining areas a lot nicer than normal and they don't get so out of hand. So it's like nobody really complains a whole lot about this because it really only takes us like five or 10 minutes if the entire family pitches in. Now, Luke was actually not home on this day, but everyone else that was home went ahead and cleaned up and it really just took only a few minutes. And just like that, everything in the main area is nice and tidy. The boys went up to kind of tidy up their bedrooms and the theater room and everything. Well, Kyle and I just finished up with the dishes, but it really doesn't take long and it just makes the biggest difference. And I also have noticed with the kids, not only are they keeping things a little bit cleaner during the day because they know they're going to be very responsible to clean it all up at the end of the day, but also we've noticed just a little shift in responsibility having this happen twice a day. There have been multiple times where Luke has stayed up and he will just like clean the dishes or he'll see me in there cooking. He'll come wash the dishes. Liam and Noah will do the same kind of thing. They'll just like ask different things that they can do around the house. And it's been definitely a shift because normally we would have to ask them to do those things. And lately they've been like offering it and kind of just doing it on their own. So I know we are getting towards the end of summer, but I would definitely recommend trying this out. It really has worked wonders for our family. All right, the kitchen is all nice and clean. We are actually going to be starting in the kitchen. However, before we start in the kitchen, we are going to be stripping some laundry and I'm going to do that in our bathtub. If you don't have a large like oversized bathtub or you need a bigger space, you can also just use like a top loading washer. It does have to be top loading. There are a lot of different ways that I've found that you can strip laundry, but the way that I prefer to do it is to use vinegar, washing soda, and then a laundry detergent. And you'll use like a one to one to two ratio for that. And then it just kind of depends like how much to add depending on like if you're using like a large bathtub or if you're using it in your top loader washing machine, how many clothes, things like that kind of until you feel good. You don't want to do this too often because it can kind of wear the clothes down a little bit. It really just strips all of the extra dirt and oils out of the clothes fibers and you'll feel they just feel so much cleaner once you're done. So we are going to empty out my bathtub right here and get started on that because this will be taking like between four to six hours. So I wanna do this first and then we'll get to the quicker deep cleaning things. And I'm just gonna kind of rinse any extra hair or anything that might be in here down. Thank you. 
and my poor plant this guy was actually believe it or not doing amazing and then when we got back from vacation this is how he is so i do not think there's anything any coming back from this i'm just so bummed <laughs> All right, so like I said, we are going to start with very, very hot water, filling it up, and then I'm going to add in a one to one to two ratio. So one washing soda, one white vinegar, and then two of your favorite detergent. I'm just gonna start with a third cup of each and then two thirds cup of detergent and kind of see how it's feeling. I might add more, but I'm thinking this might be good. All right, the tub is out there filling, but as for what clothing to strip you can also strip like your towels and linens and things like that once you feel like they're just not as soft as they could be but i'm looking for things that kind of feel like matted especially in like the armpit area and just anything that feels like there might be a little bit of buildup and that's really what it's going to do is take away the buildup and take away all like that extra dirt All right, so to strip the laundry, you are just going to be using very, very hot water. Fill up your tub or your washing machine, whatever you're using. Add in that one to one to two ratio of washing soda, vinegar, and laundry detergent. Then you can go ahead, toss the clothes right in and use something with a pole or a stick. So I'm just using my shower scrubber to make sure that everything gets nice and submerged underneath the water. So I'm just going to use any kind of pole. You can use like a broomstick, a mop, whatever. Just something to kind of push them down and agitate them. Maybe like every hour or so if you can. And you will just watch that water turn dirtier and dirtier as time goes on. And it just starts to leach like all of that disgusting stuff that's stuck in your clothes or linens or whatever you're doing this for. So we're going to leave this for a while, come back and kind of agitate that. But for now, we're gonna go into the kitchen and start deep cleaning in there. All right, next we are pulling out my favorite Bissell steam shot. I have had this for years and I love it so much. I actually had found this years and years ago before it got super popular, but it never fails me. So today I'm going to have it help me deep clean my garbage can and basically do all the work for me. All I have to do is let it melt everything away and then I just follow along right behind it and wipe all of the nasty gunk away. I don't know how it is at your house, but at our house, our garbage can gets so disgusting. And I feel like to me, it always seems like a bigger project than it is because whenever I actually go to clean it, it really doesn't take a whole lot of time, but it does make a huge, huge difference. And truly using the Bissell Steam Shot makes such short work of this. Now I know this is definitely a very popular tool, so I'm sure a lot of you guys have this. So if you do have one of these, let me know in the comments, what is your favorite thing to clean with it?
Now for the cloth to wipe everything down, I am just using some regular old microfiber cloths. Because I'm using the steam shot, you don't really need to use anything special. You definitely don't need to use like any chemicals or any cleaners on this. The steam will just take care of all of that for you and you can either use paper towels or a nice microfiber cloth to go ahead and just wipe everything down. This feels so much better having our garbage can nice and clean, but I wanted to share, I did find these randomly at the store to try out and Honestly, I don't really know if they're making enough of a difference, so I'm not necessarily going to recommend them. I'm definitely not sold on them yet. I feel like it would work just as well to take a few drops of essential oil, drop it onto a paper towel, and stick that in your trash can. I feel like that would work just as well. So before I start officially cleaning my sink, I wanna start boiling a pot of water and we will get back to that in just a minute. Now I'm just using my electric kettle, but you can do this on the stove, but go ahead and just get that started while you scrub down your sink. All right, once the sink is clean, you can pull out the drain cover and scrub it down. However, just note that some sinks don't allow the cover to be pulled out. And in that case, you're just going to want to use a scrubber or sponge to kind of scrub the underside of it as best you can. Warning, this will be very gross if you haven't done this in a while or ever, but it is totally worth all of the disgustingness because it will really help things smell a lot nicer in your sink area. Then once you're done cleaning it, you can just pop it right back in place if you were able to remove that cover to wash. Now we are going to clean the actual drain and disposal itself. So you are going to start by pouring the pot of boiling water right down the drain and immediately following that, you're going to add about half a cup of baking soda. Then you're just going to let that sit and work for about five minutes or so. And meanwhile, you're going to go ahead and boil one more pot of hot water. Now, after five minutes or so, make a mixture with one cup of vinegar and one cup of that boiling water, and you guessed it, 
pour it down the drain and you will be able to hear all the bubbling and reacting in the drain. It's actually kind of satisfying to listen to, but then you're going to just let that sit for another five minutes. And then once that's sat for a few minutes, you're going to flush the drain with the remaining boiling water. And this will leave your drain smelling so good and feeling super clean again. Now this is totally optional, but something that I have done for years and completely swear by, and that is dropping a few drops of essential oil down the drain. It keeps your drain smelling amazing between deep cleans, and you can use whatever kind of essential oil you have, but I personally love the Simply Earth ones. They are amazing quality and don't break the bank. And coming back to the laundry stripping, I have been just kind of agitating the clothes every hour or so and then after about five hours total I drained that disgusting water. Oh my gosh is that not mind-blowing to you to see everything that comes out of those clothes? So I went ahead and drained it and then you're just going to run them through a normal wash cycle in your washing machine and once they were done they felt and smelled so much cleaner. Do not sleep on stripping your laundry, it's amazing. All right, it's a new day and we are going to continue on deep cleaning. I was hoping to actually get everything done yesterday, but life happened and I just had to put my attention elsewhere, but that's okay, we're gonna continue on. So we got the laundry stripped, we got things tidied up and deep cleaned in the kitchen area, and now we are back in my bathroom. So I'm actually gonna start with like just a quick, quick tidy. It's not terrible in here. I just need to kind of like clear off the countertops, wipe down the mirrors. And then we are actually going to deep clean the bathtub, which is perfect because I just stripped all that nasty stuff out of our clothes in the bathtub. Then we're going to move into the shower. I'm going to show you like how I love to deep clean our shower. And then we're also going to scrub from top to bottom the toilet area. And then we have a few other things to do today, but we are going to just like work right along and get things done. So let's get into it. I typically will just use e cloths. I use two different ones. I use a general purpose e cloth to clean it, and then this like smoother one, it's a glass and polishing cloth, and it will leave it perfect without any streaks. I love these.
Okay, there are a lot of different things that you can use to clean your tub, but one of my favorites and just easiest because I always have it on stock is Dawn dish spray. This stuff works incredible. So I have it in this container just because this is what I use on my kitchen sink. It just looks a little prettier being on the counter, but I literally just like to can it into here and then it works the exact same. My all-time favorite way to deep clean a bathtub is actually using a broom. This can just be a regular old broom from Dollar Tree, whatever. It is going to save your back so much. If you haven't tried this, try it next time you clean your tub. You will make me. It's amazing. That is all you have to do to clean your bathtub. Grab some Dawn Power Wash to spray, a cheap broom, water to rinse, and a towel to dry, and voila! The simplicity of this leaves us no room for excuses on procrastinating on cleaning your tub. Now to move right along to a truly dirty area, the shower, you know the drill. I share these real life moments. You realize we all have them and I give you the motivation to tackle your own messes and we all live happily ever after in this wonderful judgment-free corner of the internet. But seriously, yuck, this shower always gets so disgusting so quickly and of course it is time to clean this again. You will see this will turn out beautiful. My MVPs, an extendable scrubber, the Zep grout cleaner, simple baking soda, Dawn power wash, of course, and a horse brush. Weird, yes, but it works. So everything that I'm using is once again linked down below for you guys. So that if there's anything that you're seeing that you want to add to your own cleaning arsenal, it's nice and conveniently located down below in the description box. First things first, we are starting by clearing everything out. Then I'm going to spray down the shower a bit and then I will start the cleaning with the Zep cleaner and I'm gonna let that sit for just a few minutes and then I'll take my extendable OXO scrubber brush and scrub everything as best I can. Next, I'm going to go in with some baking soda and Dawn dish spray, and that is going to be slightly abrasive to really scrub every tile extra clean. And honestly, this is something that's way easier to do while you're in the shower, so you're not worrying about getting wet or anything, but this combo will get your shower crazy clean. Also, I just ordered an extendable power brush for the shower during Prime Day, so when I try that out, I will let you know how I like it. Instead of putting everything on that bench that you guys have seen so many times and it just always gets to be a mess, I'm going to put these shelves up. I got them from Amazon. I will have them linked down below. Whoops. But I love that they actually just like stick onto the wall with these little sticky hooks. I think that will help me limit myself until I get into a better habit of like not buying a new thing and then not wanting to finish the last thing that I have. So 
There are two shells and they are slightly different sizes. So this one's a little bit bigger and then this one's a little bit smaller, but they're like super nice and clean. So I just have to figure out where I want to put them. I think right here. You guys, these shelves were crazy easy to install and I have been loving them so much. Every time I walk in the shower now, it just feels so peaceful in here. And these shelves are from Amazon. They are super sturdy and they hold the perfect amount. And along with being linked down below, I've also added them to my Amazon favorites. But if you're finding that you need more shelving in your shower, I cannot recommend these enough. I love them. Now to tackle the shower doors themselves, I am just using my e-cloths. So I'm using the general purpose e-cloth and then the glass and polishing cloth to dry everything off. And if your shower doors are too built up with soap scum or hard water, I would suggest using Dawn Power Wash Spray. I swear by that stuff. It is like my default cleaning product because it is just so powerful and it works amazing on like almost everything. But in this case where I will typically clean the shower door every few weeks, I find that I don't need to use anything more than just my e-cloths. Next up, we are deep cleaning the toilet and I'm starting out by doing a typical clean with toilet bowl cleaner and then also disinfecting spray all around and inside and outside of the toilet. And I somewhat recently started wiping down the toilet with toilet paper. And the reason I do that is because it is convenient and it doesn't feel super wasteful. And also I can flush them. So anything that kind of falls in those categories, I am all about it. Now, once I have a general clean on the toilet, I am going to be pulling out my handy dandy steam shot and go to work, going over the entire toilet, making sure to kind of melt away any of those tough areas and getting especially in like the toilet seat area and around the toilet, all that disgustingly gross stuff. And then I'm just going back through and wiping everything down for a second time. And trust me, if you do this, you will never find a cleaner toilet unless it's never been used, but this works incredible. I love this little machine. Finally, we are tackling these dreaded door rails. You can tell I've neglected them. I know I put this off all the time. This is kind of like the trash can situation where I feel like it's going to be a bigger issue than it is. And every time I bring out the steamer, I'm like, oh, I should have just done this a long time ago because this took like no time at all. But just to note, this also works so great for window sills, sliding doors, even regular door sills. It's just amazing. Seriously, get yourself a steam shot if you don't have one and let it do all that work for you. So as you can see, I'm just using a brush attachment and this mess just melted away. And then since this is so dirty to wipe everything up, I am just using a paper towel and that made the cleanup so incredibly easy.
and now that the door rails are looking like new we have to make the doors actually match them so you guessed it we are pulling out my trusty e-cloths once again and the stool to give me a little extra height and we are going to get these doors looking so nice and shiny I don't know what it is, but I put off certain chores all the time. Like I will do so many things and then there are certain things that I will just put off and put off and put off. And cleaning my windows is one of those chores. And it's so silly because it really doesn't take much time and it makes such a huge difference, especially on sliding glass doors. We have kids, we have a pool, we have a dog. It's just one of those like trouble areas and I don't know why. It's something I've got to work on. Finally, to finish everything up, I just went over my floors with our Riborock Dyad Pro. I love this thing. I've told you guys so many times, but this little tool has been a game changer for my floors. I use it multiple times a week. It is on the pricier side. It's definitely like an investment. However, if you have a lot of hard floors like we do, it is so worth it. And I don't know if it's still on sale. I will have the link down below, but last night when I checked, they were offering $100 off. So definitely a great time to pick one up if you have been looking for one. And if you do get one, I really would recommend getting their newer version, which is the Dyad Pro. They just made a lot of really great changes that makes me love it even more. All right, that is going to wrap up our deep cleaning today. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. I hope you got lots and lots of deep cleaning motivation to tackle whatever areas in your house are feeling a little bit neglected. And just a reminder, I'm uploading now on Mondays and Thursdays. So later this week, you are going to see a brand new video and I am going to be organizing and deep cleaning my fridge. But I'm doing it in like a little bit interesting way. Like I'm trying some different things that I haven't tried before to really combat a few of our problem areas in our fridge. And it has been working amazingly. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. And if you are new here, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So a couple weeks ago, I went on a big grocery shopping trip and I was kind of talking about our fridge because it has been a struggle lately. Like things have just not been working very well in there. I have organized it, but I feel like I keep organizing it in the same way. And obviously that's just not going to change anything and not going to work really great. So I kind of brainstormed some problems. I tried to figure out some options on how to fix those issues, which I'm sure a lot of us have. So I'm going to be reorganizing my fridge today. So what we're going to do is start by pulling everything out of the fridge. I'm going to actually like deep clean it, of course, because when you have everything out, why not take the opportunity to deep clean everything? Then I had actually ordered a couple different containers. I went to also TJ Maxx, Home Goods, and got some different containers that I feel like are going to help out the situation a lot. And I'm kind of getting a little bit creative with some ways that I'm doing things in here. So we have a lot to get done. This fridge is going to feel so much different once we are done. So let's go ahead and get into it. I wanna hear you say it.
First of all, let me tell you, we have lived with this fridge with all of the new organization for about a week now, and it has been amazing and actually so different than how we have had it organized in the past. And it really is not going to be overly organized with bins or anything, but everything that got added to the fridge was very intentional. So I 100% recommend using the method that I use today and customizing your fridge to your own needs needs. So to start out, I am just pulling every last thing out of the fridge and putting them on the counter in categories. And that way it'll be a lot easier to kind of organize and put things away once I'm ready. We actually got this fridge secondhand from Facebook Marketplace sometime last year. I can't remember exactly when, but I have loved it so much. However, when we got it, I just kind of put everything how and where we had it in our previous fridge. And so from the start, this fridge has not served us the very best. I continue to love this fridge because I know it had a lot of potential, but it's just not been working the best for us. And it's totally not the fridge's fault. I think I just needed to intentionally customize my organization to this new fridge and not just copy and paste the organization that I had in our previous fridge because this is a totally different fridge and it's really set up a lot different than our last one. As you can clearly see, my fridge was in desperate need of a deep clean, and that's okay because when life gets busy, your attention goes elsewhere, and the other things kind of fall to the wayside a bit, and there's really no sense in beating yourself up over it. I guarantee if you see someone that is amazing at something, something else in their life is lacking. So for example, if you see someone that is incredible about being diligent in going to the gym every day, healthy meal prepping, all that stuff, another area of their life is going to be getting less attention. Or someone whose house is immaculate 100% of the time, another area of their life is not getting as much focus. So I think you kind of understand what I'm saying, but you can totally have whatever your priority is, but it will come at the cost of something else. And that's okay, it's not a bad thing, it's just reality. So next time that you're falling short in one area, give yourself grace and also more understanding. So in this case, yes, my fridge is a mess, but a perfectly clean fridge was not worth missing extra time with my kids this week or maybe having to get takeout because my time was taken up by cleaning my fridge. I really just think it's so important to find your priorities and then just be confident in them. Don't give yourself any guilt only understanding and i think that will just give us all so much more peace i totally used to be the kind of person that would try to do everything and not take anything else off my plate and it really wore me down so terribly and so now i'm trying my best to be a lot more intentional with things and a lot more understanding of myself like if i'm going to do something something else is going to have to give because i can only fill my plate so full until it's just going to topple over i need to take something else if i want to put something else on So to deep clean my fridge, I am just wiping most of the areas down and then I am taking a few things out and washing some in the sink that needed a little bit more of an intense clean. But deep cleaning really does not have to be overdone. I've definitely learned over the years to work smarter and not harder when it comes to cleaning.
The old me would totally have pulled out every single shelf to clean it and wash everything in the sink, but it really wouldn't have made any difference other than it would have taken a lot more of my time and energy. So when I share these videos, I want to not only give you motivation, but also share and encourage you to find different ways to make homemaking not only easier, but also a lot more enjoyable. Now we are going to get into the fun part. We are going to go ahead and grab the bins and I'm going to basically just kind of dry fit them. I don't know if that's a thing, but basically I'm going to set them in the fridge, not with any food, just so I can kind of see like how everything's gonna fit. I might take shelves out, I might move them around. I'll kind of turn you around and show you actually how we've had it in the past, like how we've been organizing it and how it has not been working. All right, so how we've had things in the past, I have eggs up here, a lot of like our condiments, pickles, peppers, like or jarred peppers, things like that up here. And I have them on a Lazy Susan, I don't love that. I mean, I love that you can like access things easy, but on the inside, because this is not a really tall area, things kind of fall off all the time. Also, it wastes every single corner of the shelf. Here, I kind of go back and forth. In the back, I have a lot of extra milks because we just go through a lot of milk. Here, I feel like I kind of have some leftovers on this back shelf, but a lot of times I actually push that forward so that I can have more height here. A lot of times we have like prepped produce and things like that. This is kind of either prepped produce or randomness. My veggie drawer, deli meats and cheese, things like that. This is pretty much not utilized mostly other than just overflow that can actually fit here and still be able to allow the fridge to close with the doors. Over here, I just have some more condiments like we have soy sauce, maple syrup, random things like that this is filled with condiments up here is more like breakfast stuff like we have jams and i have yeast for making bread and things like that and then i know you're not supposed to do this but we always have our milk over here in this and it's always annoying to have to like get it out of here this is just where it always fits so we are going to be changing basically everything up also down here this is usually where we put like the bubbly or Lacroix flavored sparkling water and then also in this section up here we have emma's dog food and then over here is pretty much where we put like individual yogurts or like snacks and things like that for the boys and then I try to have apples and maybe like some little cuties up here so like I said we're going to change everything up so let's see what we do okay so these are the different bins that I got. I got a few different things, but I was like very specific. I didn't just go buy random bins. I bought everything like specifically for a certain purpose, which I think maybe has been a little bit of my issue before because it was like, oh, like, go get bins and bins will fix everything. Unless you have like a specific purpose for each specific bin, it's just not gonna be the best. So this one is going to organize our cans like the LaCroix and Bubbly and things like that. Instead of taking up an entire drawer for them and standing them up, I can just slip this into the fridge and I think this is going to be a way better use of space and open up that whole entire drawer. These are the same size and everything, but these I'm going to be using to replace the Lazy Susan with like all the condiments and things like that. I'm hoping, hoping that this will work, but basically my thought is this way I can just 
pull this out of like the top shelf and get into all of the condiments and it won't waste any space because it is like a tall square bin. I think it'll keep things contained and I think it might just be the best idea. I was really struggling with condiments because we have like minimized the condiments, but also we still have like a thousand. I don't know. Anyway, these ones I got also for condiments, but it's going to be for like pickle jars and jarred peppers and all that kind of random stuff, just so that it's something a little bit bigger that might fit like those bulkier jars. And if needed, I also have a lot of like mason jars with lids that I can decant like any jarred items into if I need them to fit a little bit more organized in there and like fit a little better. And these items I am probably most excited about because our milk situation has been a mess. It's annoying because I know we're not supposed to keep the milk in the door of the fridge, but that's just what we do because that's where it fits and that's where it works. But then we have all the extra milks, like all the backup milks in the back of the fridge. So anytime we run out, we have to reach in the back and grab it and like basically pull everything else out up front of it because I don't know, it's just, it's not working. So decanting the milk is not to be extra. It's not to be aesthetic. It's not anything like that it's just to make it more functional and I'm hoping that this will work so I did get two different options I got this glass jar it's like tall and so it doesn't take up much room in the fridge which I really like this one is plastic but this one came actually in a pack of two and it came in two different sizes so this first one is I believe a gallon and then the big one on the outside is one and a half gallons and they all have spouts. So basically I can just fill them up and I won't have to worry about them until we need to refill it. And then you can just dump the milk in there. We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure what one I'm gonna use. Whatever one I don't use, I am going to return. It can't be worse than it is now. It's been very annoying. <laughs> I ended up going with a tall glass drink dispenser because I really liked that it was glass. I also love that it took up less surface area in the fridge and so far it has worked out better than I even expected. Everyone has loved it so much and as for the expiration date, I'm actually just writing that on the very top of the lid with a dry erase marker so I can change that out every time we change out the milk and then I think about once a week I'll probably end up just washing it out to make sure that there doesn't get like any residual yuckiness in there. But also I wanted to mention this does not leak or drip which is definitely one of the things that I was most concerned about with this situation. If anyone else has been struggling with this issue, I'm going to have this link down below along with everything else that I'm using in this video, but I really cannot recommend this enough. Let me know, do you keep drinks in your fridge? Our family loves sparkling water, or most of our family, I guess, loves it. But I really hate that the drinks were taking up an entire drawer prior to this. So this can organizer has been so amazing in really giving us a lot of space back while still giving us all the organization that we needed. I have green olives, 
pepperoncinis or whatever. We have other olives. I a lot of times have pickles. Like there's just a lot of different things that we have. I would like to put them in a container so you can just easily grab them in and out. If I just leave them in the containers they came in, I can fit two. But if I put them into like mason jars, I can fit four really nicely. I got this pack of white mason jar lids from Timu. You can get them with wide mouth or the regular mouth. And then these are so cool. I have a whole roll of them, but I ordered them off Amazon a while back. And they're these labels. So what you can do is you can put them on whatever you want in your fridge or whatever. It's perfect for leftovers. You can write on them and then they literally just wash off, like disintegrate in the dishwasher or as you're washing them by hand. They are awesome. And so that would be my plan for this is like I can just put the lid on, write what they are and what the expiration date is and stick that on the lid. And then whenever it empties, then I'll just wash them as I would, you know, like if I was reusing this jar or anything. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that and see how it goes. This is all just trial and error, but like I said, things have not been working, so we're gonna change things up. Ugh, these always make my mouth water like instantly. So, so good. We can definitely get carried away with focusing too much on aesthetics, but I do think that maybe it started out with practicality and we ended up going a little overboard toward the aesthetic side. But with saying that, some things that are aesthetic can also be very practical, but that really depends on the individual or person. I know, for example, my mom, whenever I redid her pantry several months ago, she had always thought that decanting your items into individual containers was just for looks and not really a practical thing. But after we did that to her pantry, she said that she has realized it's definitely not just for looks. It really has made her pantry so much more functional for her and a lot easier to manage. And I've definitely felt the same in my pantry or other areas that I've done things like that too. So another example of that is like decanting my milk. That's something that is definitely more aesthetic than a milk carton, but it's something that probably won't be practical or helpful to me when my fridge is less full and the kids are out of the house. But to our family right now in this moment, it really is practical and so helpful. So I am letting go of aesthetics in my fridge and I'm truly just focusing on function and intention and it is actually working beautifully. And if some things look aesthetically pleasing, then that's just the cherry on top. I wanted to go over my full process for organizing my fridge, but not in a this is exactly what I use type of way and more in a this is how I got here type of way. That way you can truly customize your own fridge in a way that will really work for your own home. So to start out on this process, I sat there and thought about my fridge and I wrote down any issues or struggles that we had in it. And from there, I determined if we already had an organization tool set up for the problem. And then that's when I started getting creative with this process. So you guys know I love sharing examples to kind of get my point across, but for example, in this situation, condiments were a problem in our fridge because they were totally taking over the fridge. And then my next thought was, yes, we do already have organization for condiments in place, the Lazy Susan. And then from there, I decided if there were issues with the Lazy Susan, and I realized there absolutely was, like I didn't love the wasted corner space and how difficult it was to get the items in the center just because the shelf wasn't very tall. So by breaking down the problem areas and starting from scratch, I was really able to rethink each area and allow my mind to kind of come up with new stored solutions that could serve us a lot better. And that way we're not just continuing to do the same thing that we have always done that clearly wasn't working. We are all finished with the fridge. It looks amazing. There's definitely um, like a good amount of space for when I meal prep and when I food prep and stuff like that, which is perfect. Cause I feel like whenever you organize things, you don't want to organize it to the brim. Like you want to have empty space and that allows for life to happen 
because it definitely is going to. So I'm gonna turn it around, show you the final product of the fridge. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know anything you would have done differently, any other ideas, anything that's worked incredible in your fridge, I would love to hear, but I have really high hopes for this. Let me turn you around, you guys can see what you think. All right, finally, we are going to break down exactly how I organize this fridge. Starting on the top shelf, we have our eggs and butter, cream cheese like that. And then on the top right, I of course have all of our condiments, but they are easily accessible inside of those bins. Some of them I decanted to fit a little bit better. And then on the second shelf, currently we just have those drinks, but I also saved a lot of space. And this space is going to be for our food prep that I do every single week when we have a little bit more produce. And then on the right of that, we have that big jug of milk that dispenses it really easily and conveniently for the kids and really just anyone that needs to get it. We also have our uncooked tortillas and on top of that is a great space that we can store any of our leftovers. They are front and center and not going to be going bad or being forgotten about during the week. And then on the bottom left shelf, we have any like dinner items. We have like some pasta, some tofu in there. In the drawers, we have one that's like our deli meat and cheese drawer. The next one is our fruit drawer. And then down in those big bottom drawers, I have one side that's going to be kind of for the boys' school lunches because we're getting back into that season. And then on the other side, it is this huge drawer and I can fill it full of all kinds of veggies. This fridge organization has been amazing and I feel like this is the first time that I've gone into it with this much intention. I feel like it's definitely not overdone, but it's just what we needed and nothing more. So I hope that this gave you lots of ideas for your own fridge and if you end up reorganizing your fridge send me some before and after photos on facebook or instagram i would love to see what you've been up to and stay tuned because the next video is going to be slow homemaking and i'll kind of chat about that a little bit more in the video but it's something that's been on my mind for the last month or so and i'm really excited to share it with you guys so thank you so much for being here and i will see you in the next one bye guys Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to do a lot of cleaning around the house in multiple different areas. I also got a package of new goodies that I wanna share with you guys. And then I am going to be cleaning in the boys' bathrooms. We are planning to start working on Luke and Noah's Pepto-Bismol pink bathroom like the day after they go back to school. And so I have a lot of different thoughts and I'm trying to kind of hone in on like all my different ideas. So I wanna actually share with you guys kind of what I'm thinking in there and get your thoughts on, I don't I don't know which direction to go because I have like a thousand different ideas. So anyway, we have a lot to get done. Let's go ahead and get into it. I am, of course, starting out in my kitchen. This has been my domino chore for years. That is the chore that is very easy for me to start, but very quickly gets me motivated to continue on with my other chores and to-do list. But also, I just have to say, it has been very enjoyable cleaning the kitchen and dining room area lately. Yes, I am that years old that I am saying it's enjoyable to clean my kitchen. However, it has just been so nice in there now that we've transformed both spaces. I have really loved transforming the rooms in our house slowly but surely. And I'm currently finalizing all my thoughts and plans on our bathroom makeover upstairs. You'll hear kind of my plans for that a little bit later on in the video. But sometimes I definitely get a little bit of that paralysis by analysis and I end up doing nothing for so long because I just cannot make a decision. I definitely got that from my mom. Love you, mom. But eventually I do make decisions and we just go for it. And it is so rewarding to see the changes that you can make in your home when you put your mind to it.
I have to say I have been loving the twice a week uploads. Now I'm uploading every Monday and Thursday and I feel like it's actually been way more manageable to share a little bit shorter videos, but also it's been really fun to be able to share more videos with more topics. Like recently I shared a slow homemaking video. I've shared deep cleaning, reorganizing my fridge, a grocery haul, which I have not shared one of those in a really long time. Of course, some house projects, decluttering, just so many things. And I've also read comments from y'all that you have been enjoying the twice a week uploads too, which has definitely made me super happy. So I have lots of fun video ideas swirling in my head for this upcoming fall, but I love how just changing things up in your life can give you like a new excitement to things. And I've totally felt like this has done that for me. I got a new Timu order. Actually, this is a couple orders. This is not in any specific order. I'm just gonna pull things out and kind of show you what I got. This one is for the car. You know, like that annoying spot where everything falls into. This is to combat that. And I got a few things for the boys' shower. I got this corner shelf. This is really cool because it has like a good lip on it. This would be like the perfect spot to put a bunch of toys. It's just peel and stick. I got this water bottle organizer. This I'm actually planning to put tumblers in. This is going to save a lot of space and keep them nice and organized. I literally just ordered two of these from Amazon for over double the price. So as soon as I saw this on Timu, I was kicking myself wishing I had ordered it from them first. It is literally the same exact thing. This is one of those flexible silicone dish drains that rolls up really nice. I love this thing. A super cute cookbook holder that I'm gonna keep in our kitchen and a few of these produce holders. Open it up, stick in like your lemon or onion or whatever. And and then tighten it down. This piece right here is really flexible, so it keeps it really nice and airtight. I have seen these patches everywhere. Hopefully they work really good. These little toothpaste rollers just keep the toothpaste like pushed down. I ordered this little box cutter. You won't forget and leave it open and someone can come cut themselves because it just like immediately goes back down. Little toilet tabs, they're like auto cleaning tabs. Really excited to see how they work, but I got a lot of them. And then I actually got three of these for our three boys. Liam and Noah are definitely in the ages that they are going to love this. I ended up ordering four of these. I'm actually going to use them to reorganize like my cleaning towel drawer. Such a great deal and they are a really nice size. In the boys bathroom, I think I'm going to transition from a typical toilet brush to one of those toilet wands. These were such a good deal on Timu. These are actually from a different order that we got like earlier in the summer. Resealable magnetic water balloons. The kids love these. Magic erasers in bulk for a fraction of the cost. These work on like everything so why not get them for a cheaper price i also got an oven mitt this is one of those cute silicone ones picked up some new flip-flops here in arizona it's like always flip-flop weather even in the winter so ordered one of these wet dusters been wanting to try one so we are going to test this out today and see how it works this is actually a silicone liner for my crock pot next i got some food storage containers they have this little strainer inside keep your fruit away from all of the extra moisture that will fall to the bottom of the ground. These are disposable air fryer inserts, which makes the cleanup so nice. A little mop head for my Oceder mop. I think this is so gorgeous. You can just fill up your own oil and then spray it on your food. One of these silicone toilet brushes, it's supposed to be a lot more sanitary than a traditional toilet brush. A couple of these hat organizers, and you can attach them to the wall with this little sticky piece. I think I'm going to end up putting this next to their backpack area. One of those magnetic measuring spoon set. This is gonna be awesome to replace my old one. Two of these little pedestal stands for soaps and things like that. And these I just thought were so fun. So it's actually a little petal soap. So I'm gonna put some of these in the boys' bathroom. I think they are going to think this is so fun. Next I got this makeup case. I've actually had one of these for years, but after a long time of daily use, it's just starting to fall apart. So on top, you can put all your brushes. It also has a zipper right here. These compartments can be moved. So you can organize this however you want. I have like a love-hate with the spoon rest. So this you can actually clip onto your pot or pan, silicone so it won't burn or anything. And then you can just stick your utensil right in there and it just holds it right on the pot. Then last but not least, I picked up a few different earrings. They are such good deals and I love wearing their earrings. That is everything I got. Let me know in the comments what has been your favorite Timu find. Now that I've made a mess all over the clean counters, I started just kind of putting away some of the items that I'm not going to be using today in this gray basket. That way I can put them away a little bit more easily and then everything else I left on the counter and I figured we could go through those items together. 
Almost always we will set up our air fryer with the liners so it's ready to go. Sometimes I laugh at myself because I feel like I would love to live back in the little house in the prairie days when everything was a little bit more simple, but also I love these modern day conveniences so I don't know how well I would really love living back then. And this little oil spritzer, I am loving it so much. Now I do about 90% of the cooking in our home, but Kyle has really been getting into it lately and he was surprisingly super excited for this when I showed it to him. Okay, it is time to tackle these tumblers and I ended up deciding I wanted to order one more of these organizers, but this has already helped our cabinet so much. And these magnet measuring spoons have been amazing for the past 10 years, but they are starting to fall apart now. So I'm really excited to replace them and I'm really loving this guy too. All right, next I want to reorganize down in here. This is where I keep like all my cleaning towels and stuff, but I've just used old containers that I already had, like this one I actually used to organize my pantry years ago. And then this is just like another random one, but it's like, you can see it's not utilizing the space very well. So I think these new ones are going to organize it so much better. I'm just gonna pull everything out and kind of see how everything fits in here. I actually had extra room once I organized everything and an extra bin, so I decided to organize my 30 magic erasers and I love how easy access they are now. I have wanted to try out this wet duster for so long, so I'm excited we get to try it out together. And I have to say, I am a fan. It's definitely very reusable, and what I like better about it than a dry duster is that it actually traps the dust in the little crevices. And I also feel like it's better than a wet cloth because it can be rinsed back to new so quick and easily. So I definitely would recommend this one.
You know me, always putting off cleaning our windows for some reason, but no fear, with some water and my e-gloss, that will do the trick. Now I actually saw a really cool window cleaning hack and like mirror cleaning hack recently that I definitely want to try. And if it works out well, I will be sure to share it with you guys. But I also wanted to mention, I have been starting to share some short one minute videos and I would love to know if you would like me to share some of those with like cleaning tips or hacks, or if you're more interested in just the super satisfying, motivating ones. All righty, it is magic eraser time. Now I will say always be careful with these on new surfaces because although they work incredibly well, they can also take off the finish of some surfaces. So just be sure to check new areas first, but I use them all over the place because they really clean so much with such minimal elbow grease. And if you can find them for a great deal like I did today, it just feels that much more amazing. And this is where everyone must be putting their hands when they walk up and down the stairs because it was so disgustingly dirty. So I took a quick minute and cleaned it up and it looks good as new. We are up in Liam's bathroom within the last few months. We transformed this bathroom, so keep this one in mind when we go into the pink bathroom because it is going to not be the same. The level of difference is gonna feel kind of the same, I think. But anyway, we're gonna start in here. We're gonna clean it up. Usually the boys will clean their bathrooms, but I'm going to give it a mom style clean in here. We're also gonna use like some of the things I got. Usually I'll start in the sink area and kind of work my way back in, but I think I'm gonna start by the top and then work our way out and then we'll go to the other bathroom. Look at that magic eraser literally erasing the charcoal bath bomb line. This is a constant struggle with the boys' bathtubs because they love to use those charcoal bath bombs, but I might not be ordering those again because they always, without fail, leave behind a big mess. But once I got that all cleaned up, I quickly put up the peel and stick wire shower shelf and it looks so nice. I love things like this because it's perfect to keep things off that tub ledge and also gives a nicer shower experience. I actually used to use these cleaning wands to clean the toilet, but the refill pads got so pricey. But I think now that I have like 60 pads or something and I can order them at a really great price when you run out, I think these are going to end up being really nice for the boys to use on their toilets just because then they won't have to worry about like dispensing any of the toilet cleaner. It'll just be all in one pad.
Every time I come in this bathroom, it just makes me feel like I cannot wait to get the pink bathroom looking put together and modern like this one. We have done makeovers on all the rest of the bathrooms, but let me know in the comments which has been your most favorite bathroom makeover so far. We have the teal bathroom, we have the lime green half bath, and we have this one that used to be our jello green bathroom. Now, each time we do a makeover, we learn a lot. So I have to say that this one, which is our most recent one, is my favorite, but I'm definitely curious to see if the upcoming pink bathroom makeover will end up being my favorite once we're all done with it. So this is our Pepto Bismol pink bathroom that Kyle and I are going to be transforming the day after the boys go to school. Obviously we're going to be getting rid of the pink color. Sometimes it's like hard to tell how this bathroom truly looks, but this to you guys is much more of like a baby pink. It's way more like bright in your face pink. <laughs> we can't wait to get rid of that. We are going to be taking down the full mirror in here, changing out the light fixture. I'm still a little bit undecided on what I want to do with the medicine cabinet, if I want to keep it closed storage, or if I want to do something else with that. We are going to be leaving the vanity and everything the same. However, we'll put hardware, paint it, change faucets, all that kind of stuff. That I understand, like I know where I'm at with it. We're also going to be taking Taking off this door right here to open it up because our boys don't stay in the bathroom very long like they just come in and then come out like they're pretty much almost never needing to be in here at the same time other than when they brush teeth at night which they don't need privacy for that so we are going to do that because this door it just like is really squishy up against like the toilet and it's always seeming to be in the way so we are going to take that out just like we did in the other bathroom and then down the line we'll either like arch this make this a pony wall take that entire wall out together i know what i'm going to be doing over here i'm not going to give it too much away but we're going to be doing a color on this wall the thing that i'm struggling with is deciding what to do on this back wall let me turn you guys up. we are going to like i said take down the mirror we are going to put up the same mirrors that is in liam's back Bathroom, so the two like soft rectangle ones. Kyle's actually going to take down this single light, a light on each side, just because in this bathroom it actually is a little bit longer of a vanity and so you have more of a separation between the sinks. So I think that's gonna work the best, but I've thought about different ideas for this. So I've thought about doing tile, which would be a lot of work, but might be really cool. A faux brick up the wall. I don't know, we could always just do lime wash again. I thought about doing faux brick and trying lime wash on top of that. I thought about doing wallpaper, however, I've never done wallpaper and I'm so nervous about it and I'm not sure how it would work in a bathroom or if it would just peel because of the moisture. Please let me know your thoughts on what your vote is or what your thoughts are for this back wall. My thought is I really want to do something because right now the mirror is taking up the whole space, but when we have the rectangle mirrors, you know, they'll be like that. And then there's gonna be like a decent gap right here. And I'm not gonna be wiring in a sconce or anything like that, which would look cool, but we're just not gonna go that far. So I want to do something to take up this space, but not something that steals all the attention and like makes it feel too much. I just want it to be like a nice backdrop. So that's why I want to do something to this wall, but I'm just not sure exactly what to do. So think about that. I'm going to get to clean you. So I have some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> um, originally we were just going to do a long single light for this bathroom just like we did in that last bathroom but then Kyle told me that he was actually going to be able to do two separate lights above each vanity 
which I definitely would prefer that. But I really do want these lights to match the other two bathrooms. And so today I went on to order the smaller lights and they are sold out. I don't know how long they're going to be sold out for, but we are getting down to the wire. Like we're going to be starting to work on this bathroom within the next week or two. So at this point, I'm just not sure what I want to do. I could wait for them to come back in stock and possibly have to push the bathroom makeover again, or I could just go with a longer single light like we did in the previous bathroom and just do the makeover now. But let me know what you think about that. Do you think that one long light would look just as good here as like having two separate lights? Uh, I don't know. There are always hiccups whenever we do makeovers, but this one is just starting before the actual makeover begins and it's making me feel like this is going to be a struggle. Definitely worth it, but it's going to make us work for it. Between the boys playing football and those lovely charcoal bath bombs, it is always a good time to clean their bathtubs. They're always in need of a good clean. But once again, I'm using the magic eraser on this and everything is just coming right off. I seriously love these things. They are so impressive to me. If you're subscribed and you watch a lot of my videos, I'm sure you know that I usually opt for my mop vac. However, whenever I pull out my traditional mop and bucket, I don't know what it is, but it is just so satisfying to clean the floors this way. Alright you guys, say goodbye to this Pepto-Bismol pink bathroom and thanks so much for spending 30 minutes of your time with me. I will be back this coming Thursday with a back to school prep video because our kids unfortunately are coming to the end of summer break. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you right back here in the next video. Bye guys!
Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. We are days away from the new school year starting. Summer is almost over, sadly. So we are going to be really focusing on back to school, getting all prepped out for that. I am going to quickly tidy up my room, mostly just make the bed so that I can feel a little bit accomplished before I get into all the rest of my to-do list. Then we'll do a quick family tidy to tidy up the main living area. And then we are going to jump all into all the back to school stuff. I have a ton that I want to get done and like I said we are very very close to the end of summer so I'm kind of cutting it close on like running out of time but we'll get it all done I'll also share like some mom hacks just some things that we like to do to make the school year start a little bit smoother so I hope you are ready to get super motivated let's go ahead and get into it I wanna hear you say yeah, I, 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 There is clearly more to do in my bedroom, but I really did want to take just a minute to make the bed because I have been doing really, really good lately with making my bed each day, but I still wanted to make sure that I was staying on task and focusing on back to school prep. But once I got the bed made, I came back out into the main living area and we started on our family tidy. And as I was putting away one of the blankets, we found Ollie snuggling up in the blanket bin. So we just kind of placed the blankets off to the side, but how cute is he? He has just grown grown so, so much. I've mentioned this several times, but we have been doing our twice a day tidy almost every single day this summer. And seriously, it has been so incredible. Like the peace that it's brought to our home all summer long has been amazing, especially when summer is a bit more chaotic. It's just, I don't know, I cannot recommend it to you guys enough, but it's really amazing how quickly you can tidy an area when you do it often. Like when you clean multiple times a day, it's a lot easier to clean, you know, five minutes in the kitchen a few times a day than it is to clean once a day because then it's going to take you 45 minutes. We've kind of explained that to the boys and at first they didn't get it and then they've definitely understood it as we've continued this trend. On this day, the way we kind of wrapped up our family tidy is by actually having the boys carry their toy bin upstairs. As you can see, it was way overdue and if you've been here for a while, I'm sure you've been wondering if we would ever get to emptying that bin again because it's been just a while. <laughs> It's, it's been overdue for a while. But anyway, once the boys went upstairs and started putting all of those toys away, I actually started working on, of course, just like regular dishwashing. But I noticed some of my pots and pans were getting a bit of like a residue on the tops just from oil and grease and you know, all the things. So I of course used my Dawn dish spray and then I paired that with the pink stuff and that worked amazing. Like they look brand new again, but I've been seeing like that power paste, the scrub daddy power paste. And I did just recently order some to try out, but I'm curious if you've tried both the pink paste out and the scrub daddy power paste. I'd love to hear like what your thoughts are on both of them and which one's your favorite. Cause I kind of think they're meant to do the same thing. But I'm sure they both have their pros and cons. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. And then once I try it out, I'll let you know what I think.
I love a clean sink. I don't know what it is. You guys know, I've just felt like a clean sink is so satisfying and it makes the kitchen feel completely clean once that is cleaned up. But let me know what is something that's very small like that that makes a certain space feel extra satisfying and extra clean to you. I actually feel like our sink has been feeling extra, extra clean ever since I did like a full deep clean of a lot of different areas in our home. And one of those areas was our dish disposal. I shared that in a deep cleaning video a couple weeks ago. So I will link that up in the iCards for you guys if you haven't seen it. But it smells amazing. Or I guess it kind of smells like nothing, which is a very clean thing to smell <laughs> when you're talking about your sink disposal. But anyway, that video was filled with tons and tons of deep cleaning tips. So definitely check that one out. And I also did like laundry stripping in that video. It was super gross, but super, super satisfying. Also, before we get too far into today's video, I did want to mention a giveaway that I'm doing during the entire month of August. This August is going to be my sixth YouTube anniversary, which is insane to think that we've been here on YouTube for so long now, but it has been incredible and such a blessing to our family. So I wanted to celebrate with you guys. And so all during August, I'm doing a $200 cash giveaway. All you have to do is make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and then just go ahead and leave a comment on all the videos I'm sharing during August and as usual I will have all the information for that down below in the description box and thank you so so much for being here I am so grateful for you guys and honestly this would not have been possible without you so I'm just so grateful for you and I hope that you know how appreciated you are okay so next we are actually going to work on a few things that I got to like organize our life at home for back to school. And then also I want to make some more little stickers. I just made some of these with my Cricut and these are just going to like be able to stick onto the boys like back to school items. And then I won't have to write their name a thousand times. So this first thing that we're gonna do is it's a little magnetic acrylic board. I wanna have like three sections. So the first I wanna have like a simple routine with like our morning routine, like an after school routine. And then I also want to be able to write on here what the school is having for lunch like each day of the week and that way the boys can usually pick like one day a week that they don't want to take cold lunch and then at the bottom part i just want to have notes so like if luke has football on tuesday or you know they have a certain activity or a certain day is like i don't know dress up for whatever like we can just write whatever random notes i'm going to attach this to the side of the fridge and it's just going to make it like a really nice convenient place to put everything and then the third thing, I don't have it with me right now, but it's this little paper organizer. And so I'm going to put some labels on it, but there's enough slots to be able to put like a section for each of the boys and like homework and things like that. And I'm going to stick this right next to like their backpack area when they come home from school so they can easily stick their papers and then I can go through them really nice and quickly. So that's what we're gonna work on really quick and then we'll get into all the rest of the things. All right, first I am just measuring how big I wanted the text and I'm also going to be typing up the fonts in the bottom left corner of the screen just because I always get that question whenever I do any Cricut projects. And then I'm just going through on the Cricut design space, writing up the text that I want and setting it to the right size. And then I'm using a light Cricut mat to lay the permanent vinyl on and I'm loading it right in the machine, selecting what material I'm using, which I'm using Vinyl Plus, and then just letting the machine do the work. Okay, I'm going to just set this here for now, but this is that paper filer that I was talking about. So this just attaches to the wall and I'm gonna put this by the backpack station, but right here I'm going to like label their names or like one of the bins is gonna be for homework or things that need to return to school. And then down here is cool because it has this little slot area where we can put 
you know, kind of whatever, little things that they might need to go to school right in the morning. And these actually come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that real quick and then get that cut. From the paperwork station, I am following the exact same steps and I'm going to link this wall file folder down below along with anything else that I'm using in today's video, but I have wanted something like this for quite a while and when I finally found it, I was probably a little bit too excited, but the boys' paperwork was so chaotic last year and I feel like it kind of floated around from the backpack area to our little wood wall to Kyle's office, my office, the kitchen counters, in our bedroom, like it just went everywhere. It was not super organized and I think that this is really going to combat that and help it be a lot more structured and just a lot more organized during the year. So I'm so beyond excited to remedy that situation this school year. Once my Cricut cut everything out, I just moved into the kitchen just to kind of change things up and be in a different space and I started weeding the vinyl. And I don't know what it is, maybe it's just me, but to me, I feel like weeding vinyl is so satisfying, both to watch and also just to actually weed it yourself. It feels very relaxing to me to just sit and focus on it. I think it's because a lot of times my mind is just going so fast, like I'm always thinking of so many things and all the things I need to do. And so this just kind of forces my mind to chill out and just kind of be in the moment, but it also can kind of let my mind wander, but in a not stressful way, if that makes sense. I don't know. I never really got into these but maybe it's along the line of those adult coloring books it's just kind of therapeutic to sit and do I chose this clear acrylic board because I really wanted function, but I didn't want it to be a big distraction in the kitchen, so this was perfect. It's very kind of minimal and out of the way, like you don't necessarily notice it when you're not looking for it, but it obviously offers a lot of function and it just magnets right onto the fridge. But on here, I included a routine section, both with a before and after school section. Then we also have the lunch area where I can write the school lunch menu every day so that they can pick which one they wanna have for the week. And then and on the bottom we have a note section and that's really for like if Luke has football practice one week, if Liam has soccer, if Noah has flag football that week, just different things on different days and it will help kind of keep everybody's information all in one spot. Now for the paper organizer, I don't feel like this is absolutely necessary to label, but I do think that having labels on things can really help everyone else kind of keep it organized because I'm planning for the kids to really be involved in this and putting their papers where they belong. And so with it being organized, they'll know exactly where to put their papers, whether it's things that I need to go through or whether it's things that they need to do to return to school, whatever it may be. We have the paper organizer all nice and labeled and put together. So Kyle is going to help me attach this to the wall kind of by the boys backpack area. And I think that's just gonna make it so much nicer throughout the year because the boys are always like bringing home various papers and such. And like we don't have a good immediate organization. So basically I'm going to replace this one, which this has kind of worked, but really it just ended up being unorganized catch-all and it's been sitting like this all summer long. So I'm gonna have to go through these, but then we will have a place for everybody to put their own things and then I can like not be overwhelmed and just put it all away.
right, next we are going to be working on just making sure that the boys like school lunch area is all set up. So we did not buy any new lunch boxes or anything. We're just using the ones that we had from last year because they're actually in good shape. So we have like water bottles over here, all their lunch boxes. And then this shelf is the actual lunch bin area. And then in here is where we have like extra Ziploc bags, things like that. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of reorganize everything so that we're all set to go for the school year. Let's take a minute and talk lunch. Please let me know what are your favorite non-sandwich lunches to send to school or maybe something that you take for your own lunch at work, but something that's not needing to be reheated. I am totally not feeling inspired this year for school lunches. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll get into it, you know, like the deeper into school that they get. But I'm really striving to make the best routines, especially when it comes to back to school. And so I would absolutely love your ideas for school lunches. And maybe if I get a lot of great ideas or I start feeling inspired myself, I can even share like a back to school lunch idea video if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing. So that did not take a lot of time and I'm just kind of reorganizing this to work the best for us. These lunch containers have worked so well. I love them so much. They are dishwasher safe and airtight. These are the Hydro Peak um, like flasks. You can put like mac and cheese, soup, whatever warm stuff you want. The boys actually do cereal sometimes and I just give them a little container of milk. Back here we have like little dressing containers or whatnot. Those notes, napkins and toothpicks. And then up here, I ended up moving that from the water bottle drawer. This is going to hold the individual cups for like water, juice, milk, whatever we send with them. So they'll be all good to go. I got this hack from my sister that's closest to me in age, but she told me that she likes to pre-make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or peanut butter and honey and put them in the freezer. And of course I took her advice and I tried it out and it has been amazing, like such a great mom hack. Now this isn't something that's going to save you a ton of time because it really doesn't take too long to make a sandwich in the morning. However, on those mornings that your alarm doesn't go off or everything is going wrong and the whole morning seems upside down, every single second counts and you will be thanking yourself later when you have these frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that you can grab put in a lunchbox run out the door and actually we found that they're really nice for after school snacks when you have to run out of the house really quick for a sporting event or activity or whatever it might be there's just so many benefits to pre-making some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and popping them in your freezer and speaking of snacks we are also going to be pre-making those too. So here we just have some goldfish, some nuts, and also some craisins. This is going to save you money because you're not having to buy those pre-portioned snacks at the store, which are very expensive. And you're also gonna save a lot of time because you're not having to make them new each day. You just portion out a bunch at once, pop them in your pantry or your cabinet, and you're good to go. Finally, we are getting into all the boys like back to school items. So I have their supply list printed out this year. It was actually so fun. I did like back to school shopping date nights or day, day dates, I guess, with the boys. And I went individually with each of them and like we picked their things and it did take more time, but we were at the store for like a shorter amount of time which, with each kid. And it was just really fun being able to go together. But anyway, so I have their supply list and I already went shopping for the supplies. 
And then I just have these stickers printed out. I printed them out with my Cricut. So all you do with Cricut stickers is, I just order these online, but you can actually get them from Cricut. I just got them off Amazon. And then you go design your sticker in the Cricut design space, print them out with your regular printer, and then load them into your Cricut and it actually cuts them out. You can make it say whatever, you can use color if you want. I just made it nice and simple and did black and white with our last name. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this on all of the boys' things and then go ahead and pack up their backpacks with all the supplies that we got. Luke decided to join me and I was so happy he did because it made putting school supplies away a little bit easier and a lot more enjoyable. But oh my gosh, you guys, school supplies have gotten so pricey. I've definitely found ways to make it a lot more affordable, but I kind of joked with Kyle, kind of joking, kind of not, how we have to save for Christmas every year, like Christmas gifts. And now we have to save for back to school time because especially with three kids, like things just add up. I remember when Luke was going into kindergarten it was so exciting and so fun with one kid but it definitely adds up when you have multiple kids but anyway that's just <laughs> kind of random thoughts that i'm having about this but anyway eventually luke and i got everything kind of sorted out in two different piles i loaded up the backpacks and then went over to our backpack station kind of near the front door to tidy up the summer chaos and prepare it for back to school time So this is my sock hack. I've been using this for several years now. I'm actually gonna change out the bin that I use. So we have like a clean sock bin and our dirty sock bin over there. So whenever the boys come home, put all their socks away, it's not just a mess to get it into their room or like have to run to their room in the mornings. Everything is just all together right here. But this one is the one that we've used for the last year and it just like flows everywhere. It makes the best. So I wanted one that was really nice and deep and that would also take up less of the bench. Please let me know in the comments, what is your favorite back to school mom hack? I'm sure you guys have amazing ones that I've never heard or never tried. And I would love to hear kind of what things make a big difference for you when it comes to a back to school and just school time in general. So eventually I did finish tidying up this area and I just kind of swept out all of the mess from moving everything around. And I am now feeling prepared. I'm not ready for summer to be over, but I feel like we are prepared for school at this point. And I also kind of feel like we are going to be in limbo for the next month or so because here in Arizona, especially, we are still feeling summer weather very intensely. However, we are back in school. So it's like we're not yet into fall, but we're also not really in summer mode either. So we'll kind of see where things go this month. But I'm so excited for Monday's video. On Monday, I'm sharing an after dark clean with me and it's going to be so incredibly relaxing and therapeutic. So get your to-do list ready Monday morning and meet me back here because we will be starting the week off with the most soothing nighttime cleaning motivation ever. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to enter into that giveaway and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So tonight we are doing a late night after dark, very after dark cleaning. It's actually the very last night of summer here. So the boys are going back to school tomorrow morning and I didn't want to take any of the weekend <laughs> worrying about the house, doing all of our normal routines. I just wanted to soak up as much summer as we could together before school and all the sports and all the things start up again so we did exactly that in my house <laughs> definitely shows it definitely looks like it 
but we have no regrets. So tonight I am going to stay up a little bit late and just tidy everything up. I have a few more things to do just to help like kind of prepare for school in the morning. And I'm just gonna kind of take this as some me time tonight to enjoy the quiet, peaceful house because it is not like this often, but we do have a lot to get done. And I do want to get a few hours of sleep before we get into the school year. So let's go ahead and get this house nice and put away for the night. I have been doing after dark cleanings for years, like ever since our boys were very, very little. This is just the time of day where the house is very quiet. This is just, you know, kind of my routine. I like to clean up, set up for tomorrow, really close up the home. And I really feel like this is my most important cleaning routine because it just sets my day up for success the following day. And the amount of time that I spend doing this at night, it would have set me back a lot longer during the daytime. Just because also waking up to a clean home really kind of helps you set yourself up well mentally the next day. So I just love having a nighttime cleaning routine. something a little bit funny about us. We don't always close our blinds in the main rooms, mostly because we don't have neighbors behind us to kind of see in. And so we don't feel like we need to have that extra privacy all the time. However, when I do a more full night tidy, like tonight, I'm doing a little bit extra in preparing for the boys' school in the morning. And so on those nights, I will tend to close the blinds just because it kind of creates a little bit more intimate vibe in here. But on any given night, I will usually like to clean up the living room and the kitchen. And it kind of varies each night. Like sometimes Kyle and I do this together. Sometimes we do this as a family. Sometimes Kyle will just do it while I'm laying with the boys. Sometimes just I'll do it like on this evening but very rarely will we leave it a complete mess. It does happen, but it's not often. I am sharing this as a reminder that when you are looking at something at a distance, you cannot clearly see the imperfections. Now I challenge you, if you go back in this video, just a couple minutes, I bet that when you look at the coffee table as I'm sharing the clean room, you will not be able to tell that the coffee table was very dirty and very sticky. However, when you look up closely, you can absolutely tell and absolutely see all that mess. And I feel like I share this all the time because it's just such a good reminder to keep in mind, not just about a clean house, obviously, but just kind of with everything in life. When you look at a distance, you're not gonna see how things truly are.
personally love the calm of night. I feel like it's so peaceful, so soothing, and really just kind of therapeutic for me. And over the past several years, since having my Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disorder that affects my thyroid, I have dealt with insomnia a lot on and off and it's been a struggle it actually got better for quite a while and then the last couple of weeks it's kind of been kicking up again but sometimes i just get energy to do you know weird things at night that most people are like I'm too tired to do that at night. For me, I'm like very tired in the morning and in the evening is when I get my boost of energy. So a lot of times I'll stay up late and do random things and do work or cleaning, or I might do extra random things like restocking our pantry items. <laughs> Hand washing is something that's kind of interesting to me because I wouldn't necessarily say I enjoy hand washing. Like I don't mind doing dishes, I guess, because you can kind of zone out a little bit during this process. But I typically am like, I'm gonna get this done quickly. I'm gonna put it in my dishwasher. I'm gonna let that do the work. However, when I hand wash dishes, especially when it's in the evening and it's just kind of calm around me, it always makes me think of my mom because I remember growing up just like hand washing dishes with her. And even as an adult, every time I go to her house, she has a dishwasher, but they have really hard water. So I feel like half the time it doesn't work really well. And so over the years, they had just kind of gotten in the habit of hand washing a lot of their dishes. Whenever I would go stay with them, I'd like to clean the house and kind of help her out. And with that, I will, you know, stay up late. I might do her dishes, whatever. And so it always just reminds me of either hand washing dishes with my mom or hand washing dishes for my mom. And you know, little things like that I feel can bring us a lot of joy even when we're doing things we don't necessarily love to do. When you can think of something that makes you happy while you're doing it, it will just give you that much more enjoyment. Eleven, eleven in this video and all is well. That's what my mom always said growing up and to this day I say it now too. It's funny because I don't think Kyle really heard that and so I know the first times that I would say that he was like, what? What are you talking about? 1111 all is well. But now he's heard it so many times that he'll just randomly say it to me when he sees the clocks as 1111. And it's kind of ridiculous the amount of screenshots that I have saved on my phone for when the clock says 1111, but 
it's just one of those little things in life again like you got to find joy in those small little things in the small little moments and that's something that one just reminds me of my mom and two just makes me happy because that was always a positive thing growing up that she would say also side note i did want to ask are you guys enjoying the touches of real life sounds like the asmr style to me it is so calming and i just love it but i would love to hear if you like that, if you're not a fan, if you like a mix, kind of what you're enjoying. And here we are with another set of real life moments. This is just another little case to show that you cannot judge your up close view to someone else's life at a distance because it's just not the same perspective. And the same goes for them, honestly. Their up close view could not measure up to your life from a distance. There have been so many times, especially in my adult life, that I have felt this and that it's kind of given me comfort in knowing that because there are a lot of times I look around and I'm like, how do these people have their lives together? Together. And, you know, my life is chaotic and my life is, you know, I'm always working on things and I can never seem to get it right. It's funny because people will say the same thing to me and I'm like, what in the world are you talking about? Like my life is put together or my life, you know, like it's not at all that way. And I've just kind of learned that when you see someone's life from the outside, from that distance, it looks so wonderful and it looks so peaceful and put together and it's just really not that way to the person inside of it and this is kind of a little bit off topic but it applies trust me it reminds me of that britney spears song lucky if you guys are britney spears fans or if you you know have heard that song then you know what i'm talking about but in that song it says everyone thinks she's so lucky that she lives this amazing life but actually she is sad and she cries at night and it just kind of makes me feel like that is just how life is you know it can look perfect and amazing from the outside to somebody else but when you are living it you see all those imperfections and you see all those struggles and so i would just remind you don't compare your life to someone else's because you are not going to be seeing the entire story. And I'm sure that if you actually walked a day in their shoes, you would see the struggles they face and you would see the chaos that they feel. And just give yourself grace. Know that we are all doing the best we can. We are all making our lives the best we can. And we have so much to be grateful for. Just know that you are doing amazing and we are all a lot more alike than we realize. So 
So first I just went ahead and put away my bloom towels. You guys know I love bloom towels so much. They are double sided which is awesome. They have the cutest prints. They're really really absorbent and a really good size as well and they have that little hook so if you want to hang them on a hook in your kitchen or on your dishwasher you can totally do that but I do have a code for you guys and the code is just Amanda so if you head to their website you can use that code and save some money and I also have the link down in the description box but you guys will love them. Next, I just took a little time to fill up the boys' water bottles, and I wanted to do this the night before school just to make the morning go a little bit smoother. I'm actually a bit of a procrastinator, so I'm not the absolute best at making the best decision prior to and making life easier on myself. However, sometimes I get it right, and I'm actually thinking that I might end up starting to prep out their lunches a bit the night before because already the first few days of school, the mornings have been very busy, and I just think that's going to end up making a big difference difference in making sure that the boys have really nice lunches to take to school with them and our mornings can be a little bit more peaceful because I do think that's going to make a big difference in their day especially going throughout school is kind of doing my best to make sure that the mornings are really nice and calm for them. So I don't know if this is common anymore, but growing up, we always had lockers, especially when you got into like the middle school grades, like sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, like you had your own locker, but Luke did not have a locker last year in sixth grade, and they're not getting lockers again this year in seventh grade, which is hard because he is at the grades where he has like different periods and he kind of goes from one classroom to the next. And without lockers, that means he actually has to carry all of his pencils and his notebooks and things like that with him. And the reason they say they're not doing lockers is because most of the schoolwork is actually on like a Chromebook, so they don't have a ton of textbooks to carry along with them. However, they do have all of their notebooks and, you know, things like that. So I'm just kind of going through <laughs> and trying to organize his backpack as best I can to make it as easy and as light for him as possible. I'm like a little bit frustrated for him. I just wish that they would give him a locker so that he could actually not have to carry everything with him all day long. One of the last things I wanted to do before finally getting some sleep this night was to go ahead and fold up the boys' laundry, or not exactly fold, we kind of do like the no fold method. I pretty much just fold things in half, but I don't like really nicely fold their clothes because typically the boys are responsible to put away their clothes. This works really great for our family. It saves a lot of time and they really don't get too wrinkled or anything like that. Now, I mean, talk about waiting until last minute to get all of their clothes washed and put away, you know, the night before school, like hours before they go to school. But we actually didn't do back to school clothes shopping this year. I'm just going to kind of get them as they're needed. But with that, I did want to make sure that they have all of their clothes cleaned and ready for them so that they can pick whatever they wanted to wear for their first day of school. But I was totally laughing whenever I was sorting through Noah's clothes because Luke and Liam were having, you know, shorts and t-shirts, which totally makes sense because it's been like 115 degrees here in Arizona. And Noah's basket had pants, jackets, long sleeve shirts, a few shorts, you know, put in, but he just tries to wear like layers and tries to dress really cool, which is the cutest thing. But it got to the point where we were like, no, you have to go change because it's literally dangerous to be dressed in a jacket and long pants when it's 115 degrees if you're going outside today. <laughs> so anyway, it just had me giggling a little bit.
Finally, it is time to officially close down the house for the night and the final step is just going through and turning off all the lights and it is just so peaceful feeling how clean and organized like the main spaces are and all the things that I wanted to get done, I was able to. I really hope that this was not only motivating for you, but also really calming and peaceful for you. I feel like that is so important in the chaos of nowadays. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I will meet you guys right back here on Thursday because we are going through and decluttering and organizing all around the house and getting a lot done. So you you definitely don't want to miss out on that one. I hope you have an incredible day and I can't wait to chat with you in the comments. Bye guys! Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Today we are going through the house and decluttering and organizing several areas that have been giving us a little bit of a struggle. We first are actually going to start in this cabinet. It's somewhat of like a Monica's style cabinet. Um, and then I have an actual Monica's closet back there that we're going to be working on. That one is a big, big mess. And then we're actually gonna be heading upstairs and working up there a little bit, decluttering and organizing some things. It's going to feel so, so good once we're done. But I don't have a whole ton of time because the boys are actually getting out of school a little bit early today. And you guys know how it goes. Like when the kids get home, things just get a little bit more chaotic. So let's go ahead and get into it. This is our craft cabinet and I am so grateful for this space because especially our youngest Noah loves playing in here. He is constantly pulling things out and I love that he has like that creative streak. It makes me super excited because I was definitely the kid that had a lot of creativity when it came to things like that. And I actually had organized this last year sometime and it held up really, really well until the boys came home from school at the end of last year. And then I feel like everything just kind of went into this cabinet and the chaos really began in here. And then I have not touched it all summer long. So it was definitely in dire need of a little reorganization and decluttering. So to start out in here, I am just starting by pulling everything out and then I'll go through and dust it off, make sure that it's all nice and clean. And then we will actually start dealing with the chaos. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing is actually just going through everything and seeing if anything is either no longer being used, maybe trash, like we literally just have trash pieces of paper in here. So I'm gonna go through that and then once I get everything decluttered that way, then I'll start organizing things and actually putting them back in the cabinet. I don't think this will take too long, but it's just one of those things, like if you're not ready to do it, it's gonna be a tedious process. All of the bins that I'm organizing with are ones that I previously had. I got them last year, as I had mentioned, but they are all from Walmart and they are from the home edit line. So I will have all of them linked down below for you guys if you want to organize. I have loved them and they've held up really, really nicely. But in just a second, I will take a minute and kind of go through everything in depth and show you exactly how I chose to organize the space. And hopefully that might give you some inspiration or some ideas on how to organize your own crafts in your own home. 
Also, I did want to share once again about the giveaway that I have going on all month long. I'm giving away $200 cash to one of my amazing subscribers because we are celebrating six years here on YouTube. It's mind blowing that it's been that long, but I am so grateful for this amazing community and I'm so thankful that you are a part of it. So all the information will be down in the description box below, but all you have to do is make sure you are subscribed to the channel and then go ahead and leave a comment on all of the videos that I'm sharing during this month and you will be entered to win. So good luck. All right, it's all nice and organized now. It looks so much better. I got rid of a lot of like random papers that had been shoved in here. I actually feel like it kind of worked for a really long time until the end of the school year last year. And then it was like all the random bits that they would bring home kind of got shoved in here and then it just got chaotic. So basically in these bins on the bottom, we have Play-Doh and then perler beads. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those, but our boys love doing them. And like you kind of melt them with an iron. It's super fun. Then over here we have kinetic sand, which I would a thousand times recommend over Play-Doh because Play-Doh gets like rubbed into your carpet and everything and the kinetic sand is really not much of an issue. Like it just vacuums or sweeps right up. Then right here we have like crayons and markers and glue and all that kind of stuff. In this drawer on the bottom we have paint and like all the paint supplies. And then up top we have like little activity books and papers and things like that. Up here is kind of like our randomness drawer. So we have some index cards, which we kind of practice different spelling things or whatever the boys might be working on at school. I also have my hot glue gun in there. And then this is a little bit of overflow from the kinetic sand. And then also we have like scissors on the side. So that's kind of the gist of this, but I love having a cabinet dedicated to like crafts and stuff. And that way it's just not kind of sprawling throughout the entire house. But now that we have this done, let's go ahead and head over to the football closet. That's what we call it. We try not to open it as much as possible because the smell is not pleasant, but we need a space for all the boys sports stuff. So let's go tackle that. This is a mess. Welcome to our Monica's closet. I have honestly had worse closets than this, but this closet is accessed so regularly that it is just not really working that it's so chaotic in here. So this is commonly referred to in our family as the football closet or the sports closet because since this is like our front door closet and we live in Arizona, so we don't have a lot of jackets, this just made sense to have all the sports items kind of like in a centralized location however this closet used to be home to a lot of other things and because of the smell and I'm not gonna get all into it we ended up just kind of giving it all to the sports theme and everything else kind of moved away from this closet but anyway we are going to just start out by pulling everything out of the closet I'm kind of starting in sections on this one because I don't want to be like so overwhelming and I don't think I need to in this case so I'm starting with those top bins, kind of organizing things, just kind of pulling things out, decluttering as needed, organizing whatever I can, and then I'll kind of continue moving down throughout the closet.
All right, you guys, if you do not have an over the door organizer, I can't say that over the door organizer, you have to pick one up. You can get them from all over the place. Like you can order them on Amazon. You can find them at Walmart. You can get them at some dollar stores. Like they are all over the place and they are incredibly useful for everything like you can organize shoes you can organize outfits if your kids are still pretty young you can organize water bottles snacks honestly the possibilities are pretty endless with this but you can do so much with these and they take up like very very little space Of course, I took this time to deep clean the closet area. I typically don't tackle this closet more than once a year, so I don't get a whole lot of opportunities to easily clean in here. So while everything was pretty much taken out, I went ahead and just took out the last little bits, picked up all the trash, vacuumed it all up, and then instead of doing just a mop in here, I actually got down on my hands and knees, sprayed everything down, and scrubbed it all, and got it looking and feeling so nice and clean. Now, once I got everything taken out and deep cleaned, I started slowly kind of returning things back into the closet. And I also took that extra storage bin that goes on the very top shelf. And I decided to keep all of our extra out of season sport items in there. Typically we had been keeping those just in the bottom drawer, but really you should never use prime real estate. That's like really easily accessible for things that you rarely access. Like for example, out of season sports equipment that we definitely don't want to get rid of and we want it to be you know easy enough to access when we need but we really don't need that in like the prime real estate areas so this just worked out super nice that I ended up having an extra basket up there all right we got this closet all nice and organized I decluttered some things so let me show you like what I took out of the closet and then we'll show you all of this. All right, so on the stairs, I kind of have things organized into different sections. So things on top, we're actually going to be donating. This is like our declutter. Like we have a ton of sanitizer and I know that the boys' school needs some, so I'll donate that to them. We have some old face masks, some random flag football belt. Luke and I actually use like the daily contacts, so we no longer use this. And for some reason that was in there. So we're gonna donate that just all that kind of randomness. And then this row is actually things that we're keeping, but does not belong in that closet. Like this is Luke's old face mask. Then we have like a little sticker book, which by the way, have you guys seen these? These are so cool. It comes with like sticker sections. It's like sticker by number. Oh yeah, that's literally what it's called. Some Mabel's labels. These are amazing. Uh, a glass phone case cover. We were looking for these and literally just ordered one the other day because I could not find it anywhere. And then just a little beanie. And then these are some of Emma's little treats that I need to actually put in like a little container and not just in the box. And then over here, the random sports socks. Some of these don't fit the boys. Some have holes. So I'm gonna wash everything and then have the boys go through whatever fits, whatever doesn't, we can kind of go from there. All right, and then for the actual closet itself, here I have some containers. So this one has like pretty much Kyle's stuff, like our security system, extra things, some light bulbs. These top bins are actually for the animals. So we have things for grooming. And then this one has like walks and things like that, like for going on walks. And then this one is actually going to start having like extra sports equipment that is not in season or things we're not using. One of you actually recommended this to us. So we've been using this here and there and here to kind of help with the smell, but I do feel like we need a little something extra. And then back here are just some trampoline park socks. So we don't have to buy those every time we go. Then off to the right, this is just where I stuffed Luke's duffel bag for all of his tackle football gear. He has his helmet. There's a football inside of that. Then in the top bin, I'm going to have socks again, like sports socks. And then I think down here, we'll put maybe either Noah or Liam's. This is typically like the football, like the current football bin. So right now it has Luke's pads and his practice jersey. 
And in here, we just kind of have various things like some football pumps, flag football belts. These are like some of those reusable snow cone cups. So you can get a discount or something. This is just bug spray and sun lotion. Then we have some random bits, football gloves. This is a hand warmer for in the winter, a water bottle, Luke's cleats. And then once I see which cleats are fitting Liam and Noah, we'll put those in there as well. All right, now this is kind of random, but I actually wanted to show you this because my sister recommended it to me when I told her the issue of the smell in here. And I picked it up from Walmart. It's just a Citrus Magic, I believe is the brand. And it comes in a bunch of different scents. But this is like the first thing that I've put into this closet that has actually made a difference. I won't say that it takes all the smell away, but it definitely makes it smell a whole lot better. So if you have an area of your home that's like very smelly that you really need something you know pretty tough to handle it this is like a quick easy fix as you saw i just tucked it kind of in that corner next to the door opening out of sight out of mind but the smell does not kick you in the face when you open it which is such a win All right, we are in Luke's bedroom. And <laughs> this has been the one that probably affects me the least, honestly. However, it is the one that I've been dreading for so long, just because I've never organized his closet. It has been a hot mess in here. He really doesn't even like access it that much other than for like a few select things in here, but it is like a pretty big space <laughs> and it, I don't even know if you can see. The doors are actually like a little bit wonky because we need to add like a little bottom piece to it. And then really it just has not ever gotten organized. So it's like we moved in, everything just kind of went in there and then we let it be. And it really, really needs some attention. So we are going to just pull everything out, declutter anything that I know he's not going to want to use anymore or I know he never uses. And then I'll put things back in in a nice and organized manner and it'll be amazing. This is the before. Thankfully, it is not going to be here for much longer, but as you can see, the floor was completely covered with just about everything that it could be. It was very disorganized and we were just holding on to things that we don't necessarily need or use. And I'm positive that this has happened a lot where Luke was looking for something and he couldn't find it, which is totally understandable because how can you find what you're needing in a bunch of chaos? So I'm starting out the same way I do with every decluttering project and I'm just pulling everything out of the space one by one and that way I have like a big pile outside of the space and actually the reason that I like to do it this way is because one you make sure that you're not missing anything like you're not overlooking something in the space because you're literally emptying it out and also it just kind of keeps things real for you because you see literally an entire huge pile of things and it just makes you realize yeah, you've got to go through this. You've got to declutter some things. And then once you're done, it's extremely rewarding because you know that that pile was huge and now you've dwindled it down to just the things that you want and need. Here we are with that blank slate of a closet. It is so incredible to see how much you have when you pull it all out. This is what I was talking about. One of the reasons that I just like to pull everything out all at once 
it kind of just makes it sink in a little bit more when you can see everything all together. It makes me stay a little bit more real about what we're keeping and what we're decluttering. All right, I told you. I told you there was a lot packed in there. And it honestly like didn't even seem like jam packed in there. It was just, I don't know. It's not organized at all. So let's do this. All right, I'm not entirely sure like how exactly I wanna start with this. So I'm just gonna start pulling things out. I do have a laundry basket. So this is just gonna be for anything that I think we should donate or get rid of, but he will need to double check everything in here just cause I don't wanna get rid of anything that is like special to him or that he actually does use that I don't, you know, notice him using. Also, did you guys see how many footballs he has in there? <laughs> There's like four. I think, but they're all popped. I don't know what it is. He's gone through so many footballs since living here, but I guess we gotta start. Funny story about this picture or painting. We actually got this at Disney World when we were living in Georgia. I was 38 weeks pregnant with Liam. I know it's like the most silly time to go to Disney World, but there was no convincing a pregnant lady of basic logic like that. Okay, this is a, let me see, I have to think how to do it. To hold ties, take like a wire hanger and you bend it in the middle. They'll either have to be tied like this or you can just, if they're not tied, like you can drape them over but this way you can actually like hang up all your ties on a regular hanger without having to buy like one of those specialty tie hangers, which is really nice if you have a lot, but like Luke, he only uses his ties like on Sundays. So a lot of these are older, like they're clip-ons. So like Liam doesn't know how to tie his ties yet and neither does Noah. So they will just use clip-ons or the, these are actually like my favorite, the zipper ties where you just literally pull it. Um, anyway, but like these are clip-ons or the zippers. Luke uses regular ties now since he knows how to tie them himself. So I'll just pass those along. Oh my gosh, all of these are like wonky. Probably because they've been stored like this, so. Sorry, Luke. <laughs> You're gonna have to spend a few extra minutes this week retying. If you just take a regular hanger, you can hang your belts like that. There's two little hanger hacks. Okay, and then Luke has the least of these things usually because typically we'll get his clothes new or used but from like a thrift store or something, like I'm not handing them down to him because he's our oldest, but I got these big bins they're really really sturdy from ikea and i have one for each of the boys so liam and noah's i think they're both tucked under their bed but luke's i just have in his closet because he has extra room and typically like if we have extra clothes that they don't fit in yet i will stick it in this bin and then before going shopping for any clothes i'll check in here and see if there's anything that they're like about to get into if luke grows out of something for example i'll put it in liam's bin because it's like going to be his next and then of course we have a lot Lot of hand-me-down clothes in the garage kind of sorted out but this is more for things that are like really close to being their size but not quite i love these little s hooks for closets and we actually have them hanging on a towel bar in our bathroom for swimsuits and things like that just because the towel bar isn't as useful for us but i've seen people actually be able to hang jeans through these loops or of course like you're seeing here you can hang your hats there are just a ton of possibilities you can pick them up on amazon i'm sure you can probably find them at walmart they don't take up a lot of space they're renter friendly they're just awesome now moving right along i actually decided to go through luke's old football bin and and I decluttered anything that he either wasn't using anymore or didn't fit. And then I also packed away his old jerseys because he just doesn't need those taking up his prime real estate once again. And then I also took a few minutes to go through his PJ bin and I ended up moving the ones we're keeping and decided to store his winter football items in this lower bin in his little cube organizer in his closet, just because I feel like that's going to be the best spot for them and they won't have to be getting mixed in with all the things that he's using every single week.
All right, the closet is so much better now. And I pulled a lot of things. Like I feel like I probably pulled at least half, maybe two thirds out of his closet. Okay, so we have like some old PJs that don't really fit Luke anymore. So I'm gonna pass those on to Liam. These are actually nice notebooks from previous years that just are mostly not used. So I'm gonna save those. Like this is Noah's hat. Maybe I'll put this in Noah's room. I don't know, just like random bits that like just don't belong in a closet, but I think we are going to keep these things. Those are shelves from Luke's old room, so I'm gonna wipe those down and get rid of those. Some boots we never use here, so I'm gonna donate those. Just some random bits in here that we're going to probably get rid of, but I'll go through it with Luke. So these are some other PJs, but just ones that we don't want to keep. Some football gear that I feel like he never wears. This is actually a weighted blanket. I sometimes think they used to like it, but now I feel like they haven't used them in a long time. So I'm probably gonna get rid of that. This is so cute, but this was Luke's old duffel bag, but it just does not fit his clothes anymore. Hopefully we can find someone named Luke and give this to him. A bunch of old footballs that I think are just popped. So I don't think that we can repair these. Like I think they don't keep air anymore. So we'll just kind of look at that. If we can fix them, that'd be great. Some old football pants and just like more random little bits in here. So again, I'll go through this with Luke and see if there's anything that he does want to keep, but I think this will all be stuff that we're not going to keep. Finally, I just took a few minutes to clear out all the things that either belonged somewhere else or things that we were going to be decluttering. And then Kyle took a few moments to quickly fix the sliding door guide. It's so funny how long it takes to get around to those little things around the house. Like this door slider has been struggling for so long and we've actually had the stuff to fix it for a while, but we just never think about it unless if we're busy with something else. So it's one of those things that just kind of gets pushed off to the side, but we got it fixed today and it feels so good. Remember that beginning, remember that before of this closet, you could barely open the doors, everything was covered all over the floor, and I took everything out, decluttered what things weren't being used or what were no longer needed. I reorganized the things that we did decide to keep, and also I did wanna know I did not buy anything for this. I literally just used all the things we had, and the biggest difference was actually going through and decluttering things, and then it's really not that hard to organize a small amount of things or organize the things that you actually use and the things that you actually need when you don't have all of the clutter hanging around. So if you have a space that is feeling overwhelming and not working for you, I would urge you to go into that space and declutter whatever you're not using anymore and let your space breathe and let yourself feel the relief of not having to deal with all that extra chaotic clutter. I hope you enjoyed today's video and got lots of motivation and inspiration and stay tuned for Monday's video because we are going to be trying lots and lots of new cleaning products and some brand new cleaning tools that I've never tried out before along with a few cleaning hacks of course so you guys do not want to miss out on that I'm so excited to share my thoughts and feelings on all the new things I hope you guys have the most amazing day thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one bye guys